quality. That is one great block. Absolutely. Pick it up for the Bucks here in this first. Ooh, oh my. Wow. Jared Culver. Oh, Holiday turning the ball over. And what a save by Willie Collins. Stein. Good hustle play. And blocks away. Jackson Hayes didn't quit on the play, did he? And you know what? That's why you stay disciplined in transition. They force Giannis into the turnover. And then Giannis, the other way, just hammers it into the ground. That range from the three-point line found it right there. Oh! Inside, yes. Oh, my! I had to stand up on that one. Mm. And watch Fox come. Fox is going to say, okay, there's one behind the back. Well, Fox is... Nikola Jokic, some nifty ball handling there. Ubre snakes his way down inside and a thunderous left hand. Tomahawk over the top of JaVale McGee. That'll make his hair straight. And JaVale turned his head. He got the... Fox. Oh, De'Aaron Fox, if you don't like that, you don't like NBA basketball. Ring the bell. Oh, my, my. Split the gap between the legs. Cocked oh. it back and threw it down, man. Throw it down. Fox Force 5 flying high in Motown. Got Simmons, Cork Moss for three. Yes! Wow! Cork on Cork Moss, his biggest moment as a sixer, buries it for three. Both in the penalty. Under two to play. Harden step back. Puts up the three. Got hit. Shots good. And one. James Harden double team. And a chance for a four point play. He just looked at the crowd and said, wow. Give the stop. Trez up high. Blocked by Boucher. And then how about this play by the young fella Boucher? Takes a lot of guts to go up there against Montrez Harrell. Does a terrific job of getting a block shot right there. Two point Suns lead, seven seconds to go. DeRozan gets it and one. <laughs> well done. White will throw it in. Fighting Aldridge. Hand off to Mills. The hot shooter gets it to go. 0.3 seconds to play. With the hot hand, just to know with the recognition. Break free is Bogdanovich's corner, wide open. Up, got it, got it, it's over! Bogey beats Milwaukee! Oh, my, oh, my. The only thing I ever see you put down is water or green tea. Garland crosses over Thibel twice, goes to the basket, lays it high off the window and scores. A pretty move by Darius Garland. He had the crowd going, woo, woo, woo. The young fella all the way to the hoop for two. Look at this fourth defense. Oh! Oh! To the end. Don't challenge Javale. Do not challenge him. Danny Green long. A.D. What a play. Showtime. Anthony Davis over the top of Baines. That was nice. Table the Nuggets gets up going here. Jeremy throws it down. Just like his daddy used to do. And if you don't stop him, I mean, wham. Morant picked up by Dinwiddie. Ten seconds. Job down the lane. Off the glass and in with seven seconds remaining. Tied at 120 as Brooklyn calls for time. Irving against Morant. Irving blocked by Morant. We're going to overtime. Well, do it on both ends, then, young fella. Lowry sidesteps for three. No, he missed it. Jokic long pass. Harris has it. Set away. Well, what a pass. Peyton Manning again smiling. Watch the rebound and, and the window. I mean, that's just over the defender's hand. That's a crazy pass for his ninth assist. Got Aldridge on it. Sidesteps it. Backs up. Goes to back to work. Shovels at the memory. Are you kidding me? Nice.
Boy, you got to see it all right there from Trey Young. And then off the dribble. Woo. Nails Beverly with a 95 mile an hour fastball. Joe kicks the pocket of Young. On a high lob pass. Oh, Donovan behind the back to Gobert. Beautiful. What beautiful. a beautiful play. Unselfish jazz basketball. Ingles, Mitchell to Gobert. Here's Davis up top. Oh! Oh! Chris Boucher, the slim dunk with the dunk. Ten seconds. Murray to Jokic. Dunk it under Millsap. Jokic. Eight-point lead. Drew coming on the curl. The lob side. How about that adjustment? It was behind him on his way down. He did that. It's a great catch. Man, ten-point game. <laughs> He's got a foul quickly, trying to trap Kemba Walker. And the steal by Shooter to the rim. He lays it up and in for the lead. They ambush Kemba Walker. Got the steal. And Schroeder slips it up to the rim. And just like that, the Thunder turn the tables and now lead it by one. I start to lift their moves and get ready for the next one. Oh! oh again, push off his pocket. <laughs> He's telling himself, I, I gotta stop this. I'm, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm just embarrassing people. In the words of Shaq, he said, listen, are you not entertained? Jumper from Lavert comes up short. Allen with the board and a reload. Jared Allen, oh, rejected at the rim by Smart, right on cue. That's one of the best defensive plays you'll see. This is a guard going up and meeting Jared Allen at the rim. Tremendous play. For Miami, a second on the shot clock. They have missed it. Jones with a dunk of the day. Oh, talk about a crusher flying out of our picture coming in. <laughs> The hook pass, good hands by the ball. Look at this feed to Howard. Another great showtime feed from James to Dwight. Well, there are times when you wonder, does he really have an eye in the back of his head? He sees things way before they happen. And stay for the Sixers attempt at a fast break. The active hands we were just talking about. And B somehow kept his pivot foot. Wow. And Simmons the beneficiary. How about the balance there, the footwork from Big Fella, and then the nifty pass from the vision. Kind of expecting the newest recipient of the pass to take the shot. Oh, Diallo elevates and detonates over Chris. Oh, you know what I'm going to say. No, that was nasty. That was nasty. Morant, down the lane, lays it up. Holy cow! With seven tenths of a second, John Morant! What a big time play by the Rook! John Morant has just given Memphis a two point lead. Adams couldn't handle it. Love grabs it, snaps an outlet pass to Osmond. Good bounce pass to Sexton. <laughs> now that was a good pass there. The defender had no chance. And how about this assist by Jetty Osmond right through the wickets? Use the size and then that soft touch. Give it up. I mean, get it up there and just give it a chance. Fred Van Vliet! How about that? Walker met by Shabbat. Oh, what a move by Walker, breaking ankles, and then knocks it down. A three for Kemba Walker. Now yeah, watch Kemba just drives hard here in a second to get Shaman moving his feet. Ooh, like you said, breaks some ankles, drops him off, and knocks down that three. Gordon and Vucevic. Aaron throws a pass to himself. He stuffs it in. <laughs> My goodness, you got to be kidding Augustine against Matthews, crosses him over, breaks an ankle or two, scores, and is fouled. Wow. The cross behind the back, through the legs. Got that ball on a string right there. MB <laughs> fakes, drive. Oh, oh, a massive jam. An incredible slam dunk. 
Randall sees an opening, goes down the line. Provocative stuff. All you need is a two. Oh, he's Here's open. Troy Brown Jr. finding Beal. Beal puts it up and in. And the Wizards take the lead. There is still time on the clock. Look at it. It's like a college atmosphere in here, JK. Are you kidding me? It's like you just defeated the number one seed in America. Look at Rui Hachimo. Look at that. Tie ball game in New Orleans. He's got his Derek with one. the drive. Over Holiday, hits it as time runs out. Derrick Rose wins the ball game for the Pistons over the Pelicans here in New Orleans. Buddy Ball running with somebody and burst. Oh my goodness gracious! Oh my goodness gracious! I, I can't unsee that. I cannot unsee that. Nine to shoot. Barton out to Jokic. Jokic falling away. Good! Nikola Jokic. It's another miracle. Jokic buries it. It gets hung up in the air and turns it over. Hornley runs it out to Ross. Got to close quickly. Ubre retreating defensively. Closes the gap. Beverly in the corner. Kawhi. I love the fact that he drove that close out right there and attacked that rim with reckless abandon. Tatum drives George right there. Tatum gets a wide open look and knocks it down. Jason Tatum. You wanted a coming of age moment for Jason Tatum. You just got it with the basketball world watching. Adams. Oh, he got it to go. Put it up like a baseball pass, and it's going to count. And it was a baseball pass in slow motion. 47 and 40% for Beasley. Willard attacks, flies for the air, and stuffs it. An emphatic first basket of 2019-20 for Damian Lillard. It's all over here in Houston. They are stunned here in Houston. What a shot by Bielitsa. Hard to fly by. Good pass, ball. Oh! Caruso meets him at the top. Oh! And Caruso showing those hops right there. That's all ball, baby. Ferguson. Uh oh. Oh, rejected! And look at this clock. This was going to be a meeting. Ferguson brought it all the way back. One of the best athletes in the league. But watch a block, and the bench goes nuts. I don't want to go backwards, though, to get the ball. Good job. Job. Crowder for the win. Yeah! Morant behind the back, two defenders, drops it off. No hesitation. Splash, and the Grizzlies get their first win of the season. Westbrook left wide open, had to kick it out, picked off. There's Bradley ahead of the field, goes to James, and the ball with the one first. Slam dunk. Show us something, LeBron, there. Please show us that again. That's a little bit of Dominique off one leg. He used to double pump it, bring it down. This Whoa. is the new style. <laughs> LeBron James still has it. Kuruc one-on-one -on -one with Baisley. Oh, nice pass. Oh, gracious. Jared Allen. That's a man's jam. <laughs> Real careless turnovers, too. Dragic for Jones Jr. Hammered it down over the top of Jonas Valanciunas. What a dunk. And that's what happens right there when you meet that man late. That is just dunking goodness right there. Airplane bullet. It's exciting when there are multiple teams. That... Oh, oh my, that's exciting. Jeez. Every night of the season. Giannis at a Kumbo. 41st overall, Tim Conley. And what about that block? Zion from the 
right side. Hey. That'll get them off their, up on their feet. Hey, hey, can somebody from the 15th row throw that ball back on the floor, Man. please? We got to keep the game going. He looks like he's back at Duke with that block. Man. Man. Buck fires. LeBron looking for his first assist. And what a great play! First assist of the half is a highlight reel to Dwight. If they cannot inbounds the ball, just call a timeout and move the ball. Tatum hit the rim on the miss intentionally. Loose ball. Brown for the tie! Oh, Got it! Yes. Miracle here at TD! This is a great pressure shot by Brown. That was a terrific shot. You ask for a miracle. Miracles can happen. Here we go. Who's going to take this shot to try to tie or win? Outside to Bogey. He's crowded. Three. Bogdanovich! And the Horn wins in Houston. Oh, my goodness, Bowler. Oh, baby, you got to love it. 1.6 to play, and Bogey comes up big. Oh, my goodness. DeMar DeRozan with a vicious slam. Oh, no. <laughs> that was nasty. He, he had that look, didn't he? Morant with a running start. Elevated oh, oh my goodness! John Morant with elevation. John Morant in wow. the clutch. Oh my word! We shoot 38 percent from downtown. Here comes LBJ. <laughs> Look out! Oh, the crowd on their feet. That's what they came to see. If nothing else happens, they're happy now. Kobe White, Zadaransky. They won't go away. Good God. Always in the rearview mirror. Trouble. Loose. Chicago's got it. Oh, no. You're kidding. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Stop it, Zach Levine. So Adams launches it to shoot a shooter, catches, and scores. Two. And what a pass by Steven Adams again, folks. This may have been his best one all season as he hit him right on the... In life, we're all presented opportunities. We have to be ready, be prepared to be legendary. How we doing? How we doing? What up? What up? What up? What up? What's up, AB? What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? 
What's up? What's up? I see Tommy on here. Man. Yeah, Tommy. There we go. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? In quarantine, that quarantine darkness. What's up? Yeah. We want to welcome back Tommy. Welcome back, Tommy, man. You you definitely you definitely a soldier, man. It, um, anything you want to say before? You know, I just want to thank you guys. I, I don't think that you guys will. I don't think you guys will really ever truly understand, um, you know, how much, you know, that video, how much your prayers, how much your thoughts um, really got me through, like got Sarah through. Um, I, I don't think I could ever put into words um, how much you guys mean to me and how much that, uh, that, that helped me fight. <laughs> it was, it was a battle, but, uh, you know, I, I can honestly say that, um, you know, your guy, that, that, that video that you guys sent and, and the constant text messages and, and thoughts and prayers were unbelievably felt. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I beat it. <laughs> I beat it. I got to, on Saturday, I got to hold my daughter again. Um, you know, and, and you guys were a huge part of that. So I just want to thank you guys for the prayers, the thoughts, the love. Um, like I said, I, I don't think that you guys can ever truly understand. And I don't know that I ever will either. <laughs> um, but just thank you guys. And, and, you know, I, I truly do love, love this group of people. And thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Tommy. Um, thank you for fighting through. I knew we were going to be all right when you said coronavirus picked the wrong one. <laughs> so just having the mindset like that, um, that was that was something that really stuck with me and will stick with me forever. And so um, before we start, I want to welcome you to Be Ready, part 32. Um, this went from Be Ready to Be Ready family. And so I just want to thank all of you for taking the time away from your family and your loved ones is not, you know, it's definitely not taken for granted. Um, and so I'm excited tonight to be able to, we had a, a first session with Coach Fran Fraschella and it was so great that he's taking the time out to come a second time. And so I want to thank him for, for doing that and coming on a second time and teaching us uh, more about the level three ball screen. So without further ado, Coach Fran Fraschella. Thank you, Alvin. It's uh, great to see everybody. I, uh, I I had such a great time last time with y'all. And uh, by the way, a Brooklyn guy just said y'all. I married a Texan. So I learned that uh, y'all is singular and all y'all is plural. OK, so I just want to tell you, it's great to see all y'all tonight. OK, um, how about that, Dane? You never thought you'd hear that, right? Uh, but anyway, Coach Brooks, what do you think of my what do you think of my Zoom background? I was trying to find something basketball wise, Coach Tang. And I couldn't find the Ferrell Center, so I went with the Palestra. So I, I hope you guys like that. It's one of, my favorite, one of my favorite buildings in the world. If you ever get to Philly, uh, get over there. It's, a, it's, a great, it's great. Um, hey, uh, I'm, I'm really honored to be back tonight. I told Alvin about a week or 10 days ago that uh, since I talked to you guys last, I've been watching more and more pick and roll tape, uh, adding to the film repertoire. And, uh, you know, hopefully I did not know Alvin was taping the last segment. And then we had the good fortune of having a young man. And I see him tonight, Eric. What's up, Eric? Eric Gracia, the head coach of women's basketball at North Dallas High. Um, we met through uh, Anwar McQueen, uh, who I'm going to do some uh, work with. I recruited Anwar uh, back when he was in high school and he played at Cal. And he, now he's doing a great job of training young uh, mostly minority coaches uh, in the uh, video and analytics game and, and hoping, pushing them on to NBA spots. So Eric, thank you for what you did on that video. And we're going to do it again. And we're going to get this video out to all you guys. So, um, so uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I didn't realize when I watched the tape of the last clinic, how much I talked and how much you guys were kind enough to listen. So I'm going to get started right away because I know we got the bubble scouting coming on and Alvin, if it's okay with you, I'm going to share the screen. See if I can, uh, hold on. I need to. Okay. Need permission.
And and basically, what I want to do tonight is is review a little bit of of a level three pick and roll, and uh, talk a little bit more about the pick and roll concepts, and also give you some more solutions uh, uh, to to handle the various coverages you might see during the season. Okay, Alvin, I try that free. again. Yes, sir. Okay, so let me see if I got it up here. Yeah, so you're going to lose my face. I think you'll see me in the corner. And so let me get started, okay? Um, one of the things that's uh, happening, as I told you last time, is that international basketball is really affecting the NBA, college basketball, and then eventually high school basketball. And one of the things I want you to think about as you watch some of this tape tonight is the idea of four corners, okay? Um, we always talk in pick and roll, you hear this concept, you know, spread the floor, spacing, et cetera. Well, my European friends call it the four corners concept. And I wanna show you what that means. The first clip I'm gonna show you, and I'll, let me turn this, uh, hold on a second, Alvin, I gotta stop the share, I believe, and I'll come back to it. Um, how do I get to uh, turn the sound down again? Let's see. Uh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Let's hit the optimize. Uh, and I'm, I'm back. Here we go. And uh, let's see right here is this button. That's good. All right. So let's watch when we talk about when we talk about four corners. Now, one of the things I want you every I want everybody to watch is uh, a, a, what I call false motion. OK. You're going to see guys moving and, and spacing and cutting. And I didn't have time to do these diagrams, but you'll certainly have time. And then it's possible that we'll add the diagrams to this video. But as the pick and roll starts in the middle of the floor, I want you to notice that 80% of the clips I show you tonight are going to be what we call the four corners concept. Two players in the deep corners, two guards in the slot, and a screener coming up to set the ball screen, okay? Um, one of the things about European basketball that's similar to college and high school is that they can play zone. So when because they can play zone, they don't like to run a lot of side ball screen action because you can either load up in man-to-man -man with five on three on one side of the floor or play zone. So you'll see most pick-and-roll action – starting from out top between the slots. So this is what we call false motion. And watch how beautiful all this is. All these guys are cutting. And now you'll see this one guy who's cutting through the lane right now. He's a little late getting there. But what's happening right now is we move all these defenders around so freely that we confuse the defense. But when we end up setting the ball screen, they're really in a four corners look. Okay, this guard is coming to fill through the lane. This man in the corner starts to cheat up on the right side, but he gets back quickly. And now what we have is a four corners look. And this is what we call, and, and you can see now, look at that, look at the crazy, look at the crazy defense running all, all over the place. Okay. I, the first four things I'm showing you tonight before we get into level one, two, and three and review it is just this concept of four corners, but it all starts with false, false motion. Now here, there's not much false motion. It's throw it to the big, throw it back to the guard, but look at the, uh, look at the integrity of the spacing. Okay. Every college team that I watch practice um, those guys in the corners are constantly cheating up off the baseline. Okay. And if there's one thing that I can really hit home to you guys and ladies is keep your players down in the corners because if they cheat up their defenders cheat up and then it really ruins the integrity of the spacing. So now let's look at this very simple. Let's talk about level one, gaining advantage at the point of the screen, which the point guard is doing. Level two, the point guard must read the coverage. And this looks to be an aggressive coverage by the screener's man, which means that he already knows that when his screener releases early, if there's not level three help from those two baseline guys, 
He's looking to his big rolling. And he knows this because he's got two guys playing him. Okay. So here's what I see. This is how this is how many clips I put on here. He's got level one beat. Level two, instead of staying, stays with the roller and watch level, watch the point guard at level one. Gains an advantage and maintains the advantage. Now he's got shooters in the corners, so they're not going to leave, and he's going to get the level one advantage to the rim. Up, oh, okay. Now we think he had level one advantage. The defense collapses, and now he makes level three pay with the pass to the corner. Okay, all this happened because of what we call four corners um, offense. Okay, the concept of four corners. Let's watch it in real time. Hit, get it back, drive it, level one advantage, level three helps, kick out corner. Very easy, very easy. Okay, inbounds play, very simple. Thunder run this a lot. All right, there's your four corners look. Adams up high with CP3. Schroeder hands it off. He gets out to the wing. Look how spaced those level three guys are. Again, beautiful movement. Uh, level two defender shows hard. Hit the roll, man. All right. Patience by Adams. Kicks out to level three. Forces a rotation. There's the drive. Gallinari gets fouled. Okay, so I'm starting off with these four or five clips because before we talk level one, level two, and level three, I want you to understand the easy concept of four corners and how you can add it to your offense. Okay, there's the four corners. We got two on one side. We got the advantage at level one. The level two defender cheats up. The level three defender doesn't pull in in time. And there's the roller to the basket. Couple more, and then we'll get into real level one action. All right, watch the beautiful movement here. Look at how the defenders are all moving, and nobody's really sure where to be in terms of help. Okay, now as this guard comes off, he fills one. Of, he fills one of the four corners. The two men on the baseline and the corners fill the two corner spots, and the other guard is in that other slot, hence four corners. Big guy shows. Look at the advantage of level one right now. That defender on the ball is, is, is lost. So his, his level two defender, his teammates got to help. He stays high. Lob pass, dunk. One more. Very simple. Okay. Little screen to screener. Decoy. Ball screen. Level one advantage, level two defender is high early. Point guard knows that. He's, he's peaking at level three on the weak side, not, not in position to help. Nice one-hand wraparound pass. And you'll see all of this on tape, folks. All right, now, let's get to level one, all right? Now, um, I showed you a lot of slow guys last time. But it's important that some of you guys who, who coach fast players in pick and roll, they've really got to use their speed and their change of direction to get downhill. All right? So it, we don't always coach really fast players, but we do sometimes. So you got to teach them to use their speed at level one. And that means in order to gain the advantage, okay, as we get the level two defender involved, is we're faking – with our eyes, we're faking with the ball, we're faking with our body. So let's watch how Kemba does it here. In transition, okay, side pick and roll, drag screen at level one. Schroeder's a good defender. Let's take a peek. Crossover. He's got level one beat. Tax level two. Scores inside, okay? So let's teach our fast players how to change speeds at level one and punish the defense and maintain the advantage. All right, Kyle Lowry, one of my favorites, all-time competitor. Let's watch how he fakes, uses his fakes at level one to throw his man off and gain that advantage. Boom, crossover. 
to the lane. Good finish. Okay? Lowry again. Okay? Remember what we're talking about now. Level one. Gains an advantage? Yes. Defense is in a drop coverage? Yes. Okay? So he's now thinking about how he's going to attack the big guy at the foul line. He's also peeking at his three teammates and the level three defenders. All right? And again, are you teaching your players to finish at the rim? There's the, there's the advantage. There's the speed, the little reverse, using the rim as a protector. Okay? More level one. Handoff, very common play in Europe. That teammate's going through to fill. We're going to get to a four corners look here. That, that, that cutter through the lane doesn't get out quick. That's okay. Watch the, watch the defender on the ball here. That Italian player is Daniel Hackett, who played at USC. Half Italian, half American. Daniel Hackett on the ball. Okay? There's the advantage. And that point guard plays downhill at level one. Before we get to level two and level three, we're always thinking level one, gain the advantage, look to score. All right? This guy's one of the great players in Europe in the last 15 years, Tia Dosic. He's over the hill now, but he's still crafty as hell. Watch this. Watch how he uh, – watch what he does at level one here. Boop! That's so good, we got to watch it again. Okay? Defender cheats out early. Low crossover, splits him, boop. And then he's got the floater to finish. Okay, one more time, level one. Boop. I'm not stopping as much tonight, folks, because I really want to get through a lot of these because you're going to have all of this on tape. Okay, very common. We showed you this last time. First play of the game in the Spanish league. Uh, and this is a simple ghost screen. But again, you've got to be able to change speeds at level one to make this work. Point guard knows a ghost screen is coming. Boop, disappears. Speed to the rim. All right, our favorite, Joe Ingles, slow as molasses. Again, this might be a clip we used last time. Here comes the ball screen. All right. He's faking. He's juking. Little ball fake to Rudy. Finishes at level one. Are you training your guards to finish at the rim or with floaters or to utilize the rim to protect against the shot blocker? Are you adding that to your skill development? All right. There's an ice coverage. There's Tony Bradley leaving early. We showed you this last time. Just want you to see that even slow guys can get to the rim against the best in the world. Okay, my man Huertas from Brazil throws it back. Watch him faking now. Look at this. Boom, level one. Okay, we're attacking level one. Couple more. A word this again. There's that, there's that, there's that four corners look, folks. Okay. And you see those guys in the corners, they do not ruin the integrity of the four corners. They stay there. Okay, there's Huertas gaining the advantage. Now he's got the big. Look at those two level three defenders pull in. We know he can pass it. Let's see what he does now. The world is his oyster here. He's either got a drop off, kick to the weak side, or a layup. Showing you some more finishes tonight, okay? We want those guards to finish. There's that again. What are we talking here? Four corner action. Look how simple it is. That's beautiful. We got to show it again because it's so beautiful. Watch those level three guys. We know work to sees it all, okay? So he's got the big guy high. Look at that screen at level one. Is that beautiful? That's illegal in college, by the way. But level two defender pulls in, or over, I should say. Huertas is looking at the level three guys. 
They don't really want to leave those shooters. Watch this pass. Beautiful. All right, here comes Kemba. Let's watch the speed. Boom. All right, what's he looking for? Level two. Robert Williams rolls nicely. Kemba, Kemba's, Kemba's got the corner guy. He's got it all here, really. Look at watch, watch uh, Gordon Hayward in the left slot with his hands ready. He's got left corner. He's got Hayward. He's got Robert Williams rolling. Okay. He had level one, two, level three mastered there. Okay. Little go screen. So now we've got that advantage at level one. I don't even know what's happening here. Ah, great one hand wraparound pass. Looks like he has the drive. Look where the big guy 23 is. Okay. Okay. Those level three defenders on the right side aren't really cheating in. Beautiful pass here. Now, are these guys pros? Yes. But can you train one hand passing? Absolutely. A couple more, then we'll get down to some snake action. There's our guy again. There's the four corners. All right. Nice little, nice little roll to the, to the, to the cutter. Okay. Good action here. I think we showed this. I think we showed this last time, but again, want you to see this. Okay. This is a good little, this is Gallinari shooter. This is screener Adams. Watch. I really like this because I think Billy Donovan does this on point for purpose. He crosses the two wings underneath, okay, on purpose. And we still get the roller. He likes this play because he opens a lot of games in this, this double high action. Here comes Gallinari. Here's the double high. One. Here comes the big. CP3 is as good as there is. Look at all that space. Don't want to leave the shooters. One more. There's Gallinari. Now watch what happens. Level one is at such a disadvantage, and Taj Gibson's a pretty good defender. He has to stay home initially on CP3. So the, the, the I think it's Harkless. Number three, he cheats in to help on the roller all because of Alonzo Trier not being able to get over this screen. So watch CP3. Fakes to the roller, and he hits Gallinari. Off an inbounds play, same play. Here's a question for you. Can you run your best plays – off a side out of bounds and underneath out of bounds. Very simple. Okay. This is so simple. They're in, they're going to end up in their four corner set off an inbounds play. And it's basically the same thing they run during, you know, during a, a half court set. Little hot. Oh, okay. Here's what we got. I want you to watch this now. Now we're in what we call a Gortat screen. Okay. I want you to watch this now. Here's something new. We didn't show you this last time. This is going to be a step up screen. Okay. Watch the screener. Watch the screener now as he rolls. And the man on the ball is going to perform what we call that hostage dribble. This is, this is Raptors a couple years ago, two years ago, three years ago. Okay, so there's the, there's the hostage dribble. And the idea here is because the screener's man is in a drop, watch Pirtle, who's been traded, watch him run interference legally for the ball handler. 
And I think that's DeLon Wright. So he got the hostage dribble with Kennard on his back. They're moving around the help side and the level three guys. And look what Pirtle does. Who likes that? Pretty good, right? Coach Tang, you like that? I do. Uh, Fran, I got a question. Go ahead. Uh, At level one, when your guard takes the defender away from the screen. Yes. Sometimes the big thinks, well, he's turned it down and going, but he might just be setting him up. Is there a drill or a call or something that to let the big know to keep coming with the screen? No, I don't think so, Jerome. I think it's got to be a read because I think if you have a situation this year where your your guards can reject that screen and get downhill into the lane, you're going to let them do it all the time, right? So I think what the good the big's got to read here is is the guard who rejects my initial screen, does he have a legitimate chance to get downhill because he sees that he's got an advantage on his man where, where the big guy can then release to the rim. If he feels like because he's rejecting the screen and he's not going to beat him, but it's just to get the defender off him at level one, I think he's got to read that he's got to stay in place so that your guard can back up dribble and then use the screen, if that makes sense. So I think it's so a lead. how would you how would you drill that if you're teaching it right now how would you drill it I just think you put two, I think you I think you would probably dummy it two on zero oh with coaches but then I think you got to put them in a two on two and read it so what has to happen is let's say they come up the court in transition and the and the guard and the big are in the slots okay and the big is going to come over initially to set the screen okay. The guard may actually fake to the ball screen in order to set up the rejection of the screen. And so that if he can fake at the ball screen and reject the screen in a two on two situation and get downhill, let him go. Okay. And so if he can't reject it and get downhill, what he's going to do. And Steve Nash used to teach this to us. All he's doing by rejecting the screen and trying to get downhill a couple of steps. If he can't beat his man, is get back to his real estate at the top of the key. So back that defender off into the lane. If you can't just flat out beat him, back up dribble and now allow the big to come over and set the ball screen. And presumably with an advantage at level one, because the defender on level one is getting back into the play a step late. Does that make sense? I can't hear you. Let's open up Jerome. Yeah, ahead, coach, well, yes, yes, Fran, my bad. It, it does. It, it makes sense. Uh, so I think what you got to do, it's a read situation because if I, you know, this is, again, I, I always think back to my days in the schoolyard. If I'm coming down the court in that pickup game, coach, uh, where's Dane? This is, this is Brooklyn talk here now. This is Manhattan Beach or Soul in the Hole or Fort Street. But <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm coming down in a, in a game and I got my guard, my big running with me, I'm going to almost act like I'm coming to the screen and set up the rejection. And if I can reject it, I'm off to the races. If I cross over to reject and try to get downhill, but he cuts me off, whoop, stop on a dime, back up dribble, use the ball screen, create the disadvantage. Fran, let me, can I ask you a question as well? Yes. Does, 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 is there ever an ideal spacing like, you know, in college, they run, a, you know, we have a lot of college guys on and they run transition breaks and guys get the spots. But the pros, sometimes a pick and roll can, can like, as you see it on this still shot, it can, it can start anywhere. Do you feel there's an ideal area or zone that, like, they're good to start in? I would, t- I, if I was coaching in college again, I would teach four corner spacing and transition. Okay. okay I would teach it where... We came down, and maybe there's times where we use a second big like the Oklahoma City Thunder did. Maybe it's a mobile big who can pick and pop and come down and maybe a double drag and transition. But Mm -hmm. I think I would make sure, and I I know college coaches, Dane, I've seen them try to do this because they see the NBA guys doing this. They want those wings to run to the corners, and because they're so anxious to get the ball, they cheat out early and they bring their man with them. So I think that's a big thing right there.
but I would, I would in transition, I would run a lot of four corner spacing. Got you. Thank like you. We're showing you. All right. Here's another, here's another Gortat screen by Gortat. Okay. Okay. So there's the, there's the level one over and drop. Now watch the, watch the man with the ball is going to hesitate. He's going to allow Gortat to get in front of him because he knows he's got the level one advantage with the, with the defender on his back. Now, again, college coaches, which is almost all of you, watch for the moving screen here. It's a, but, but it's still, I think it's a teachable legal play. Now, where does this work? Because we're talking about solutions. This works against drop coverages. Okay? Guard over, big man backing off into the lane. So understand what the solution, another solution for drop coverage is, this is an extension of what we call the snake dribble with a, what I would call a Gortat screen. One more. Okay? This right here, watch this, is a nice little action. They're going to hit Gordon Hayward. It's all a decoy. Hayward's supposed to screen for Marcus. He's supposed to get the hell out of there. Okay. Rudy, uh, Ricky goes over. Big man's in drop. Tice does this all the time. Marcus Smart's been trained to hostage here. And I like what Tice is. I think you could teach your big kids this. Get your butt on the big, open up like you're posting so you're not blocking him like a lineman. Hold your seal legally. Allow Marcus Smart to get to the rim. I think we got more stuff coming now. All right, now that's just a simple snake. No, no, no Gortat here. Simple snake. Downhill. Clippers. CP3 tries to cheat in there, picks up the foul. Okay? Just a simple snake. Show you a couple of those. All right, now let's go through these quickly. These are just great passes again. Left hand. I'm going to try to get through these quickly. We did these last time. I'll show you a couple here. But again, we're attacking level two and three now because most of these that I'm going to show you, we have the level one advantage. Drop off. All right. All right. This is a little bit different, but I want you to watch this because this is really relevant to, I think, college basketball. We're, we're in a four corners look, but the point guard pushes the big out, or the wing, excuse me, corner. So we're going to have side ball screen here. A lot of you guys do this. But watch the cutter through to the corner, recognizes that we're attacking the baseline. And this is a corner cut here, okay? It's a little bit different than what we talk about with corner cuts, but he's going to reject this screen at level one, He's going to bring help. And this, this, this wing who cut through, he recognizes that his man is helping. So teach this. This is a corner cut. Hey, teach Fran. those guys away from the ball to move, you know, and, and be in a great position to, hey, to get open. Go ahead. Quick question for you. Can you go back to that last play? Sure. When they reject – what, what are you teaching the big? Where Where is he going? Because he, like, right on that play before, he goes question. in the middle of the lane. It's a good question, Russ. Let me see if I can back this up just a step or two. I, let's see if hope I don't screw this up. Okay. Ah, okay. Here we go. You asked a very good question here. And I'm going to ask every one of you now, does your team have a dribble penetration offense? Okay. So – Everybody who rejects screens and allows their point guards or guards to drive baseline, there should be a dribble penetration offense. The way I used to teach it was this. I had one of the bigs cutting to the circle, the, the restricted arc circle, okay? 
I had a, I had a drift in a corner. I had a diagonal on the left wing and I had the other big coming or, or whoever was there. It's usually a big coming behind the driver to be the safety man on the right wing, Russ. So we had drive, drift, drop, and uh, not sure the fourth one was, but that was the safety, okay? So the guard is driving to score. There's sometimes, there's usually a drift in the corner. There's a diagonal. That's the other one, diagonal. There's a drop at the restricted arc, and uh, then we throw, we have a safety behind. And it was a D also. I can't remember it right now. But in this case, this is just good, smart basketball. Because on the rejection, that corner guy sees that his man is so deep. He could drift if he wanted for the three. But he, he makes a really smart read and cuts to the basket. And find himself getting a layup. Okay? So the, 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 the moral of the story here is was when your point guard drives baseline – you ought to have four guys knowing exactly where they need to go. Okay. Now let's watch this. We're getting into some corner action here. 45 degree cuts. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Advantage at level one. Throw it back to the to a back to the popper, and we're going to attack the nail now. I believe this is what I put on here. Maybe I didn't put it on this one. Let's see. Nah, this is just this is just level three. This is just a magician Teodosic. Watch this fake. Yeah, that's just that's just good level three stuff here. All right, one more level three. Look, I showed you this last time. Are you training your guys to make this pass? One hand pass to the other corner. Okay. All right, let's get some new stuff on here. Okay, here we go. Let's watch now. Let's see what we got. Ball screen, step up, level one, level two. Defenders cheat in. Defenders cheat in. There's the roll. What's CP3 looking for? What's he looking for? He's going Gretzky behind the behind the net. He's going Gretzky. Defend, defense is cheating in. Level three pass, weak side. Big man's high. That's an aggressive coverage, which means we should be lo looking initially for short roll or if level three is pulled in, weak side. They pull in, weak side. Okay, one of the best passers in the league. Ingles. George Niang, level three, one hand pass, jump shot. Hey, Good. coach. Yes. Coach. Yeah. Yo, thanks for answering all my emails too. But I got a question. Go. Um, you when when do I teach my guy to look to on uh, weak side? See this all right here. This is hard, Brandon. Okay. This is hard. Mm -hmm. Look at Joe Ingles' eyes right now. He's looking already. Okay, now th th this is this is this is hard for young players, but you got to train them. Again, we're talking defeat level one, engage level two. But when those defenders cheat in, see where those guys are. You got to create drills that simulate this. You can run coaches into the lane. You can go three on three here with with weak side defenders, four on four. But you got to train your drivers when when the help gets crowded in the lane with level three people make these passes cross court That's okay right. That's and you and i can talk about drills we can do uh when we're off this call okay okay
I'll help you with those. Hey. I promise. Hey, Fran, if you if you back that up, yes, right there, Brandon, I'll, I'll um just the last clip. Go ahead and help us. So so Brandon, we we teach our guys whenever just if you back it up right when the ball handler has it. Like Joe Ingles got the yeah. ball. Watch the defender as when he turns his head and looks for the screen. We tell our guys go opposite. Every time the defender looks for the screen, you go opposite. And you'll see the guy on the ball. I don't know who it is, but he's gonna look here as George Niang oh, yeah. is coming. He's gonna peek. Yeah. Oh yeah, he peeked. See it? Yep. See how he turns yeah. his head? Yeah. And so as soon as he turns his head, you go opposite and you got him. Yeah, that's a great teaching point, everybody. You know, um, when I taught the man to man defense with ball screens, we always taught, we called it this term, seal away from the screen, force the ball to the screen. So that means when we taught offense and our guys knew to force the ball to the screen, any time the defender cheated his eyes to the screen, uh, in coach, uh, to Coach Tang's point, we reject the screen. Remember, rejecting the screen is good. The number one object of pick and roll is to get to the basket with your dribble. Number two is to create confusion at the point of the screen. Joe's got that defender cheating. Bryn Forbes, I think. See that, Brandon? And Joe okay. smells it. He's attacking. Boom. Great point, Coach. Gotcha. This is D'Angelo Russell. Okay. His man is stuck. He engages the screener's man. He's cheating. He sees those two defenders cheating in. His head's up. I love this here because I'm going to show you a couple things. This is good basketball right here because as you get good at hitting the short roll, and I got, I got, to, I got to show these to you here shortly. As you get good at hitting the short roller, look where the nail defender, uh, we call it the nail defender, the guy guarding Draymond Green. He's going to pull into the nail. We call this heavy nail, okay? When that defender is heavy nail, you got to throw this cross-court pass right now. And Draymond's either going to get a shot or he's going to get a, a guy closing out and he's going to drive it. Okay, so here's what I'm telling you now. When we gain the advantage at level one, especially when we screen to the outside, looking for the short roll, as we get good at hitting the short roll, the defense is going to bring those level three guys to the nail. You must punish level three with the short, with, with the, with the cross-court pass and attack the nail. I think this might be an example here. Let's see. Okay, there's those nail defenders cheating in. The guard sees it. Beautiful. All right, so as you get good at the short roll, they're going to cheat those level three defenders in. You got to make them pay. All right, look at this. Advantage at level one. Attacking level two. The roller's coming. The, the, the player from the Philipp this is Philippines and Serbia Okay, that he doesn't really want to leave that corner man, but he does. But watch the weak side here, those, those two level three defenders. They're watching ball. Boom. I think they were Xing out on the weak side. Our old reliable, Joe Ingles, slowest guy in the league. Okay, this is let's start getting to some solutions here. Okay, first one. This is hard. This is hard, but I just want to show you what great basketball looks like. I'm gonna a little step up pick and roll here. The Bulls are not good defensively, so this isn't even fair. But everybody's in transition. Simple ball screen to the outside of the court. This defender cheats up. This is this is why D'Angelo Russell got that max deal.
I won't even show you show you that again because we don't have anybody that I think is capable of doing that. I want to get to some more solutions. Here comes D'Angelo again. Same thing. Spread. We're coming in transition. Little drag ball screen to the outside. Defender cheats up. This is just great two-on-two -two coordination. Coach Tang, man, this is just skill development. This is hard to teach, but this is still beautiful basketball. Did you ever watch him at college? Oh, the yeah. He was, he was a magnificent passer in college. So did he give the ball up that quick in college he did. also? He did. When I had him at the Combine, I did a special breakdown on him. If you go back and watch his Ohio State days, he was every bit the passer you're seeing here. So maybe he had it and it wasn't really taught by Coach Holtman, but he, he certainly was this good a passer, uh, A.B., in college. One more. Short roll. Okay, this is good now. So now watch. Short roll, corner cut. So what we're showing you now is when we hit the short roll, let's cut this guy out of the corner every time. All right. So again, I showed you this last time when teams come up and, and aggressively attack your, your pick and roll right here. And it's a, and it's a, it's aggressive coverage. And we think we're going to hit the roller. The roller has got to be good enough to make the extra pass to level three. They cheat in open up level three. Let's bang that shot. Royce O'Neal. Like it. George is really good at getting out of here quickly. Second screener. Roll. Dunk. All right. They ice them. Okay. Dribble handoff. They switch it. Teams might do this to you. They ice them. So we got, we've got, uh, we've got, a, I consider this an aggressive coverage. Hit the roller. Under control, big man. You got to train this with your young bigs. I'm going to move on from this. This is all stuff that you guys have seen. Okay. Let's get to some European basketball quickly here. These are corner cuts now. I want you to watch this. These are corner cuts. This guy falls down. They still, I right, so now watch. This is the like a end of a play breakdown. We got we got a we've got a. Um, it's not really four corners because it's a heavy side, and that's okay because we got one man over here. But watch the corner man. Recognize that the side is heavy or it's crowded. So watch him leave. He's going to leave. That's, that's okay. That's what we call a corner cut and a drift. Go ahead and leave on this. We still have the roller. We still have the lift out of the weak corner. The, the man in the right slot is going gonna, is gonna to drift to the corner. We don't have it. That's okay. We empty out to the other side. Here comes another ball screen. And this is beautiful because that corner cutter made two corner cuts. Watch that man in the right corner. He's a shooter in the right corner, so watch this. He's going to leave early. They don't have anything. There's no advantage at level one. Ah. No advantage at level one until he uses the screen a second time. See, he's going to come back and set that second screen to get a level one advantage. There's the advantage. This guy in the left corner just vacated the right corner. So watch what happens. Roller, lift out of the right corner. And this guy in the left corner is going to corner cut one more time. A lot of confusion on the part of the defense, and they get what they want. This is beautiful here. Watch this. Watch them reset this. Heavy side, driver, still looking for that advantage at level one, a couple rescreens. re-screens. 
that, that corner cut and drift, roller lift out of the left corner. This is beautiful basketball. Watch that guy in the right corner sprint to his space in the left corner. Hey, Fran, another quick question for you. This is Russ again. Yes. Um, if you if if you had to teach some of this stuff over again, how? How much of your – like this right here, this is off a triple threat versus yes. live dribble when you're teaching ball screen stuff and in, in, yes. in individual breakdowns? Yes. Well, well how much would I well, – teach it? I'll teach it both ways. Off of but, live but how much would you spend 80% of your time live dribble? You know, how would you divide that up? I would probably go 50-50, and I do a lot of this in player development. You know, I do a lot of two-on-two -two with this. I would do a lot of interaction between a, 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 a perimeter player and a screener all the time. All three of my perimeter players, maybe four with my screeners all the time, creating the advantage at level one. Drag screens, Russ, re-screens if they go under, uh, drop coverage, switches as we did last time, which we won't do it tonight. I would, I would train uh, my, my, my perimeters and my bigs to handle any Here's what I would do. You figure out in your league what the three most common pick and roll coverages are, and you break them down and you teach them two on two. Because if you can't teach them two on two and you're going to see switches or you're going to see hard hedges, or you may see some teams drop and your, your players don't have a solution, we have nothing. Make sense? Thank you. Here's that corner cut. He goes opposite. Swing, swing, shot. Okay, I'm going to move ahead. You saw you saw this before. Hey, hey Fran, that corner yes. cut, is that a personnel thing? Is like if a guy can't shoot, you cut him corner or I, you cut you cut not from necessarily, the top not, not necessarily, okay. Jerome. In this case, let's go back to this real quickly. Um, I think this was the one. That man in that right corner is a shooter, okay? So depending on where you're set up with your players, as we talked about last time, are you putting three shooters out there or two? If you're only putting one out there with a, with a point guard and a big, they're going to really crowd that lane. So hopefully you've got at least two. So watch, watch, let's watch what, what the shooter does here. It's a heavy side. So we know, depending on the level three defender, if this level three defender on the wing is cheating in, he could 45 degree cut right there. Leave your shooter in the corner. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. In this case, it's going to be a corner cut. So the, the wing, the wing player on that side is going to drift. So watch how the shooter gets out of there. And we just swing it to him on the second side. See it? Yeah. And now from here, he could shoot it or drive the close out. So that corner cutter, I told you last time, I called it a Kirilenko cut. Doesn't have to be a non-shooter. It can be a shooter. And that means your other players know to reverse the ball quickly to that shooter if he makes that cut. Gotcha. Make sense? Yep. You guys have seen this before, so I'm going to run this ahead. Okay. Yo, wait. Can we go back to that? Go back to that right fast. I'm sorry. I don't want to. I, I know I'm limited for time. That's the only reason, Brandon. Okay. So he's – that's okay. aggressive coverage right there. Yes. Um, so let's read so he, it. Let, let's read it. Let's read it from the beginning. Okay. Did I pass it? I did. Well, that weak side was open. Okay. You know, so I, you know, let's watch. Friend, right, so listen. Brandon, let me answer it this way. Let's break this whole play down. Level one, level two, level three. All right. So level one, not, not really defeated, but he's brought level two into the play. Mm -hmm. That means he's already, he sees the aggressive coverage. He's thinking short roll. Yeah. Now he's also reading the, the, the level three defenders. So is the big man. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's the level three help. Now this is a coverage. This right. is actually a defensive coverage. The low man takes the roll. The high man in the eye takes both on the weak side. 
Okay. This is okay. a dangerous coverage for a defense because we have the corner cut or we have the slot guy open weak side, Brandon. Coach Tang, you see this? This is a this is a coverage against teams that are killing us in the short roll. So they're in a this is a distinct coverage. Bottom of that weak side eye at level three cheats up. The other guy backs up. He sees the cutter. So we could, if this, if this big man would turn around and face right now, he'd probably get a layup. Second best thing is here, hit the slot man. Open three. Okay, we took you through that whole thing, Brandon, from level one, two, and three. Yep. You've seen this before. Okay, there's the level three. There's the, excuse me, the, the double at level one, uh, two. There's Jokic. Sees the coverage. Corner cut. You pressure me and trap me. I make you pay. All right, let's watch this now. This is good. This is a coverage. This is actually a coverage now. Sorry about this. I don't have a chance to stop or start this. Okay. So now we're talking one of the we're talking a high level point guard IQ here with Tia Dosich. Okay, so watch what happens. What do we have here on the ball? Two. We have we have an aggressive coverage, right? Right. In the right corner, level three is not leaving. Okay. They've probably been killing the killing this team with the roll all night, the short roll. So watch the, the watch the offensive player's man who's going to pop out to the left wing, smell out the short roll, and he's going to stay. This is what we call heavy nail help. Okay? Now, this point guard is one of the best passers in the world in the last 20 years, okay? He's, he's on a par with everybody in the NBA, Tia Dosich, okay? So this is not fair, but you still got to train your guys to be able to do this. He sees that the help is staying at the nail. Watch him make this pass. Now we got a two on one and on the weak side, but they still hit the roller. This is so good. All I'm telling you, and I know a lot of you are saying to yourself, my guards can't do this. What I'm telling you is this. You have a plan. That's your play. The defense has an adjustment to your plan. You must have an, a, a solution for the adjustment. And in this case, the solution is go opposite of the, the pressure at the nail. He's not open, but watch the passer throw this to the roller because he knows his man can't get back in time. Here's more heavy nail help. Okay, 45 degree cut here. Watch this. Short roll. Guy still cuts from the weak side. Teach those weak side guys to move. Don't stand still. Okay, pick and roll, side pick and roll. As it looks like a switch, it could even be a zone. Okay, now something different. We call this go and catch. First time I'm showing you this tonight. Here's a way to attack the nail. When the nail help cheats in, okay? This is what we call a go and catch. Watch Gordon Hayward. Boom, downhill right away. Tom Izzo, go and catch. This is simple pick and roll basketball here, folks. This is our this is our little four corner action. I think we're going to get to it, sort of. No, nope. okay, three on the baseline. Watch the man in the left corner. Okay, again, level one, level two, level three. Defeat him at level one, which Cassius does a good job. 
Level two help, level three help, falling asleep, skip, downhill, go and catch. Same thing, go and catch. I think this is pretty good. As, by the way, George Niang, who you guys from the Big Ten, 12, excuse me, he's made himself a really good NBA player. And uh, the Baylor guys know he was not a great athlete. He does this all the time. Watch him in the left corner. He started to go before he even had the ball. I love that. We're getting into some solutions now, okay? Throwing behind. If when you go back and watch this, watch it for level one and level two, because you'll see how we attack level three here. That defender who was at level three, he's lost because he was cheating in to help on the roll. And look where I think that's Gabe Brown, maybe. I'm not sure. But watch him, watch him go and catch before he even catches it. Gets fouled. Okay. Another go and catch. Scores inside. All right. A few more. Hey, Coach, hey, hey, uh, Coach Brooks, I'm so sorry. Can I go a little bit longer? You have as long as you want. I would just, whenever you're done, we're good. I'm, I'm going to go fast through these. I want to get to the, the meat, meat and potatoes. No, you're fine. You're okay. Fine. Watch the go and catch behind. Drop, level one, advantage. Ooh, left-handed skip. Look at this, left-handed pass by Donovan Mitchell. He did not do that at Louisville. But watch the, watch the go and catch here from the weak side. Look at those, uh, those help defenders. I call them level three. Boom. I think that's uh, Bogdanovich. I think you can train this. I do. I think you can train that. Okay, a few, a few. You saw this last time. I'll, I'll run through these, but we know what's going to happen when it's a hard hedge. Hard hedge. If you don't have the short roll, advance pass. Set up the high low. Advance pass. Hard hedge. Flash the big. That's Nigel Hayes. Two on one, advance pass. Advance pass. You guys watch it, and ladies watch this on the tape, and you'll see it. I won't stop and show it now. One more advance pass versus a heavy, heavy, uh, a hard, hard pressure. There's the pressure. We could be thinking short roll here, okay? But he doesn't really have a good view of the short roll. So we make the advance pass and great, great action. Look at this. They cover the, they cover the roll. Kick out. One more. That's Thomas walk up from Stephen F with the ball. Now watch this. You had this on the last tape. This is a high seal right here. They switched it. They got a guard on a, on a big high low. You'll be able to watch that on tape when you go back and review this. Okay. Now how do we attack the heavy nail? Okay, watch this. Remember how we just did the uh, advance pass? Okay, they know they know this team likes to advance pass to the big. Watch what happens when the big flashes. Who can tell me what they've done here? They, they brought the guard. It. Go ahead, someone say it. They switched it. Well, they yeah, I would say they brought the guard over from the weak side to switch this. I would call this a 2-2-1 press right here. 
So there, there, uh, when when Basconi of the Spanish team plays the Lithuanian team, they know when they aggressively hedge on the side pick and roll that Zalgiris likes to go high low, right? So Zalgiris had a solution for the adjustment, which is a skip pass to the weak side. And this is Thomas Walker. Don't tell me uh, Kyle Keller and uh, Brad Underwood taught him this. That's just a joke, by the way. But this is just playing a lot of basketball, okay? It's an example of jumping the pass, right? Yeah, talking? it's a jump pass. He jumps to he does he doesn't he jumps to make the pass, not to find the pass. Two on one, boom. So now we're attacking the nail. Okay, now two more things I'll show you, and then I'll get out of here. This is called Spain pick and roll. Before I say anything and I show you this, has anybody on this call heard of Spain pick and roll? And if you have, open up your mic and just say it out loud. Yes. 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 Go ahead. Somebody answer. Yes. 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 All right. Uh, Is that, uh, how do you say it's Gamelli? Yeah. Gamelli, what's Spain pick and roll? Tell us. Uh, Middle of the floor ball screen with a big and a shooter. Right, so it's screen to screener. Would that be yep. fair? Yep. So we're going to ball screen with the big and then try to back screen with the shooter on the big. Yep. Okay, excellent. I think most of you guys and ladies know that. If not, don't worry about it. They call it Spain pick and roll. I literally ran this 25 years ago. We called it screen to screener. That's okay. The coach from Spain is a good friend. They call it Spain pick and roll now. Now, that watch this. This is a great play after a free throw or at the end of the game or end of the half. This is Spain pick and roll from the full court. So we're going to set a big on little screen at the, at the, at the mid court and then a little on big screen at the foul line. So this is just taking Spain pick and roll and extending it full court. I think this would be great after a made free throw. I think this would be great with like seven seconds to go in the half. Okay, let's watch. Back screen, screen a screener. Mm. Guys like that, Coach Tang? Yeah, I do, especially like like you said, if it's a special situation. Yes. Now, yes, and here's what I like about it. You can be running half-court Spain pick and roll, which I'm going to show you now, and just turn it into full court, very simply, in one 10-minute segment of practice. So you now have a late game play, because by the way, you're not only getting the big guy, you're causing confusion and getting jump shots too, as Gamelli knows, because sometimes the screener's man on the second screen, right? The shooter is going to set the back screen, Gamelli? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this is Serbia running Spain pick and roll right now. So let's watch. There's the back screen. Excuse me. There's a screen on the ball with the back screen by the shooter. Yeah. Corners are filled, and we simply have a screen, a screener play in the middle of the floor. There's the back screen trying to cause confusion. There's the pop out, and we still get the roller. It is awesome. I'm going to show you some plays here where they don't even set the back screen, and these jokers still get open. Okay. <laughs> Screen. Now, this was supposed to be back screen, down screen. There's so much confusion that we gain the advantage at level one. And you'll be able to watch this later. I think I got seven or so clips on this. Spain pick and roll. Now, this time, instead of using the screen... Coach Tang, he rejects the screen, even though it's Spain pick and roll. Because the object of pick and roll, first and foremost, is what? Go downhill off the dribble. And that big guy actually set a screen in there. I don't think this was by design. I think he just saw that he could reject the screen. See that? Coach Tang, did the defender turn his head on the ball? No, he just backed up. (laughs) 
I think he did turn his head a little too now. Did you? I didn't see it. I looked like he yeah. just backed up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, wait a minute. The oh, Coach Brooks, he wasn't playing with his chest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here we go. Watch him on the ball. Spain. He just got beat. <laughs> Spain. And I'm telling you, they don't even set the back screen and they still cause confusion. Remember the second, second rule about pick and roll basketball, create indecision at the point of the screen and Spain pick and roll does this. I mean, this is crazy. They don't even run it right. They still get it. We're going to have some level three looks here soon. These guys do a good job of it running on a zipper cut. Okay. Back screen. There's the back screen. There's a confusion. Somebody, somebody better get the roller. Nope. Too late. Nigel Hayes doing work on the block. Or don't know. That was uh, Zach Lede. That was Zach Lede right there. Back screen. Oh, there's a ball screen, back screen. There it is. Watch the level three defender now on the weak side. Spain pick and roll. Ball screen. Supposed to be back screen, but it can be a down screen too, by the way. You can you can invert these guys anytime you want and go ball screen, down screen for the shooter. You've still created indecision. The man guarding the point guard is lost. Look at him. Mm -hmm. Big guy's not sure what to do. Does he stay? Watch the level three guy come from the weak side. In fact, that is that Giannis? I think that's Giannis, folks. Sure does look like him. Yeah. That's Giannis. Who's going to be the MVP? I think he's going to get Defensive Player of the Year and MVP. That's what the NBA writers are saying. Look at this. Giannis coming over for the block. Nope. Too late. Can't do that. Okay. A couple more and I'm out. Same thing. Causing confusion. You'll see it on the tape. Again, just creating indecision at the point of the screen. Here's the last thing. Here's the last thing I'm going to show you. And there's going to be more on this tape for you to watch. But I, I, I've done, I think I've shown you some stuff here. All of this action I'm showing you is all fake motion. And this team does a great job of screening to the outside of the court. They call it reverse pick and roll. This is the team that. Matt Thomas from Iowa State played on two years ago, and now he's in the NBA. And Big Mike Dom, the dominator, played on this team this year. All this fake movement. Watch all this movement. Okay, now, all of this movement is so they can set that screen to the outside, which we showed you. And again, the short roll is, is just always open. The short roll, when you set it on the outside like this, um, it, when, there's a, when there's a coverage, if it's a drop coverage, you still have the roll. If it's an aggressive coverage, you have the short roll. And when the nail is guarded, you're looking to the weak side to level three. Watch the roller. There's the roller. And there's the level three look. Hmm. 
Watch what they did on the weak side this time against the nail. I think you guys can do this easily. You run a play that's going to involve a, what we call that reverse ball screen to the outside. Why not just interchange on the weak side? I think Villanova does this. Move the help. Move the nail help. We've seen these already. I don't want to boy. Oh, I've left. last two. I promise. Tell me what you think, Coach Tang. Watch this now. Do we have a solution for? Do we have another solution for nail help? Watch him reverse. Okay, there's going to be the short roll. Watch the nail. Watch the foul line. Watch the weak side corner. What's he do? Trying to flare screen in. Yep. Have a solution for every coverage you see. Well, I promise you this is the last play. This time they come to the middle of the floor. Instead of a 45-degree cut, they screen in. I went long. I apologize. I wanted to jam that in. Does anybody have any questions on this? I have one question for you, Fran. Uh, and I'm actually going to go on the other side of the ball. You talk a lot about level one, getting yes. the advantage. Let's look at it from a defensive standpoint. Yes. What have you seen has been the best? Because uh, I, I kind of asked this question last time about what your best pick row covered, and we talked about the drop and kind of the ice. Gamelli, let me let me let me let me say this to you before you ask me that question. Yep. You must train your defenders on the ball to fight over the screen and to never give up, even when they're when they've lost the advantage temporarily. Okay. You must have tough-minded defenders on the ball that don't hit the screen and quit. Okay. Which is a common uh, malady of. <laughs> all high school and college guards. So yeah. I was fanatical about skinning up and getting through the screen okay. at level one. So the first thing, the first answer to the question you might've asked me is yep. we have to train ourselves in individual defense to, to, to try to maintain as much of an advantage defensively at level one as possible. Because what I've shown you in these last two sessions all of you listening is if your offense gains the advantage at level one, level right. two, and level three fall into go. line. Yeah. Do you have what's a question? Your, you have question? Yeah. Uh, what's no. your thoughts on going under? I think, I think what coach Tang had a great idea last time. If they go on, if you go under, expect a rescreen. Mm -hmm. And if you expect a rescreen, then decide in where, and you practice this, we're either going to trap it or switch it. Yeah. He had a great, he had a great solution. I thought last time when he said it didn't matter who the four or five was, they were switching the second rescreen. Yeah. So I think what you got to do is be clear with your defense and say, here's what we're doing. When they rescreen that second time. Okay. We're going to boom, right. whatever. And then you practice that. Right. And then your team is comfortable and confident in that situation. Anybody want to add there, coach? Yeah, I? hey, I'd say too is that um, I would I would figure out does the guard you're going against how many shots does he take off the bounce on ball screens, you know? And then what is shooting percentages yes. because sometimes it goes way down. And uh, when I coached the U.S. Virgin Islands team, the men's team, we played uh, the Bahamas in Puerto Rico and the point guard for the Bahamas was Tum Tum Nairns. And we could go under the ball screen at the free throw line with him and yeah. they couldn't run anything. Like, and that's from that, from that one game, coach Drew has always been against point guards who can't shoot. I mean, like right. you gotta be able to shoot. 
And I, I wasn't necessarily sold on it. After that game, I remember, like, right, never have a point guard who can't go on the ball screen on. It just, yeah, and I it, think, Coach Tang, to your point, Gamelli, is this. You're, you, this is why you want to have, in my opinion, at the college level, three different coverages that you're really comfortable with throughout yeah. the season. Yeah. I don't think you can be great at seven, but I think you can be really good at one. You can yeah. be great at one or two. Yeah. You can be very good at the third because there are going to be games where, to Coach Tang's point, who's the screener and who's the guard using the screen? Yeah. Is the screener roll? Does he pop? Does he come off a screen and shoot? Does he come off a screen like Tum Tum? Right. And in our league, obviously the reason why I ask that, because a lot of guys in our league aren't great at coming off the screen to shoot the three. You know, yeah. the percentage on that goes way down quite a bit. So yes. I mean, I think that's where you're not going to be beholden to one right. coverage. It's going to be right. what do we see the most during the season? Yeah. And what do we have to get good at? And I would just tell you all of you that less is more. Okay. You probably over the course of a season, if you got great at two pick and roll coverages, you could survive. If your team's smart enough to add a third, I'd say go ahead and do it. But, you know, in the NBA, these guys are pros. They play 100 games a year, international, same things. These guys are, you know, these guys are so smart, it's, it's not even funny. So you don't want to overthink this stuff yeah. defensively. Thanks. Anybody else? Uh, you, you've been very kind. I didn't mean to – I had a feeling I might go long, Coach Brooks. But, uh, um, you know, again – I, what I want you to do when you go back and watch this, because I didn't break down as much and we ran through a lot. Do me a favor. Every single clip I put on here tonight, you need, you need a couple hours to do this. Watch every single clip and run it back and forth three or four or five or six or 10 times. And look at it from the standpoint of level one, two, and three. And look at it, as Gamelli said, from the standpoint of how are we defending these plays? And I think train your eyes to watch all 10. If I have one message for everybody tonight, I said it to you last time. Someone told me that Larry Brown's the only guy in basketball who can see all 10 and know what's going on. I say nonsense. Train your eyes on these videos to watch all 10 and understand that because I went through this quickly tonight, there's so many little details that you'll catch on your own and say, wow, look at look where that defender got pulled in. Look what that point guard saw when he threw the cross-court pass. So there's a lot of good stuff on here, both offensively and defensively. Train your eyes to watch this stuff. I'm available to go over some of this stuff with you. Uh, my man, uh, Coach uh, Grassi, is going to put together this video with a lot of good, cool stuff. You'll have it as a teaching tool. And um, I just say, hey um, – I'm just so excited I got to come on again. This this Be Ready group is fabulous. I know most of you are, uh, you know, continuing to be, if you're not strong in your faith, you're, you're, you're striving for that. And uh, you guys are difference makers. You, you men and women on here are difference makers. Um, you're going to be passing your knowledge on to young people who are going to look up to you and, and see you as role models. And you're going to help change change the country, okay? You Fred, are. yes, go ahead, Dave. Quick, qu quick question about I, I like the point that you made about um, not only us as, as coaches and evaluators being able to see all the plays. Yes. Let me ask that 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 made me think of a question. Do you think with the with the shortness of uh, with this new generation, their shortness, and I guess in in retaining information. Do you think that affects some of them in knowing where all their personnel is when they come off certain pick and rolls? I threw a lot of stuff at these guys, uh, you guys on these two, on these two clinics. Okay. Mm -hmm. It all comes back to training them at each level. Okay. So let's work on beating our man, gaining the advantage. Then let's set up drills so that we put out a couple coverages, Dane, but yeah, ultimately you got to create drills that train all five. Def how to attack all five defenders. And I'm going to leave it to you on this Zoom call to figure out drills that are going to make your players better. If you need some help from me, I'm here to help. But as I, as I said to you last time, the best way to come up with drills is to go look at what you have on paper and go out on the court and use your, use your brain power. 
okay? Train your eyes, train all, tra train yourself to see all 10, pass on your knowledge to the kids you're coaching. Take some of this film, show the film to them, break it down. Hey, here's what I want you looking at when you come off a ball screen. And, you know, I, I think that that's where we're at. Become great teachers. That's what I'm telling you. Become great teachers. Okay, Alvin. Thanks, friend. I appreciate it. And hey, listen, I apologize again. Uh, no, 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 no reason to apologize. Keep grinding, but... keep grinding, everybody. And uh, as a couple of you guys, I answered and I noticed that it didn't go out and it was stuck in my draft. Uh, I don't know if I know Tommy, um, Russ, I don't know if we ever got together. I know Brandon, we got together. Obviously, where's my man? Uh, where's, where's Northwood Institute? I saw Lonnie was on here earlier. We did two hours with the, his staff. I'm here to help. As long as we got time, I'm here to help. So call on me. Okay. All right. Thanks, friend. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Here, regards, here, everybody. Uh, say a prayer for me and my family. Everything's good on my end. I'll be praying for everybody. And let's just all pray that our, our world gets back to normal. Okay. Sir, and it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen without uh, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay. Amen. Thanks, friend. Yep. All right. Great job, my friend. Some of those passes look like me out there playing. <laughs> oh my God. I actually would have been the person shoot the ball instead of passing, to be honest. Amen. <laughs> Let them do all the heavy work. Just throw it to me so I can catch and shoot it. Yo. All right, so we'll transition to bubble scouting. Let's see who we have here. Maybe I'll go. All right. Who is that? Who is that jumping out like that, Dave? Yeah, I got Bam. Jesse, can you pull it up for me? My computer Wi-Fi is a little slow. Yeah, I got you. I'm going to show everyone else how to do it once you're done. To okay. start, then I'll roll straight into yours. So... Jesse, you're not going to introduce yourself. We, you got it's a new week. People probably everybody don't know who you are. No, we know who you are, but you yeah, don't to, you saw know. a lot of familiar faces on here. I'm Jesse with Just Play. We are a learning management platform that gives coaches the tools to create all their content uh, for their team. And right now, more than ever, I feel like our platform is more important for teams as they're trying to reach their players remotely. So whenever I share my screen here in a second, you'll see the coaches dashboard and it really encompasses everything for your team's preparation from an animated video playbook, which some of you have seen on uh, past calls to scouting to quizzing. It really gives you a, a full feedback loop. So for anyone that is going tonight, you have your login, and if you've done everything correctly, like I showed you in the video, then in the top right corner is a mobile iPad tablet looking icon. And if you open that, it's going to open up the player app where it's more of a presentation view. And the team that you have the player on that you've assigned yourself should be right here on your dashboard. And if you click on that, you'll have your matchup and you'll hit view profile and we can go from there. So I'm going to stop sharing just for a second so I can get David's ready real fast. You said bam, David. Correct. Bam. So you're looking a little nervous over there, Dave. Man. Little guy, I'm glad I got all the bigs under wraps, at AB. <laughs> AB, is that a great dry fit that you're showing off that's not on the website yet? <laughs> that's a good call right there, Ring. That's a good call. That's a good call. We need that hat, AB. What a hat at?
I was <laughs> and, and the be ready mask. We need you, a be ready you mask. Know where I am. Can I get a beanie? Can I get close where I am. Can I get a beanie? <laughs> Thanks, Doreen. No, hey, that was a scouting mistake right there. I was calling that out. I was working on my scout. I'm testing the product. I'll be seeing people post that on Instagram how they test their products before they put it on the website. So that, that, that's my excuse. Are hey, you supposed to have B, Ch B. Chappelle uh, model that? <laughs> Tommy Strong, baby. What's up, baby? My fault. I was a little late on here, man. What's up, baby? Good to see you, man. You too. Strong in that mug. All right, David. I got you ready. All right. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, so here's Bam. Uh, Kind of, I went at it from the perspective of presenting this to a player kind of before the game, so I kind of kept it a little simple. Uh, just a couple of nuggets for, for them to pick up. Uh, obviously, he's going to set a lot of screens, ball screens, pin downs, DHOs, um, all, all the sorts. He's obviously really looking to roll hard off them and obviously looking for the lob most of the time. Uh, he will keep it off DHOs, though, um, and put it on the floor. He will shoot when he gets in the, the paint. He's not really looking to back you down. He's going to kind of shoot a little right-handed floater. Uh, he will initiate offense, trigger the offense from the top, um, obviously averaging five assists. As a big man, um, I, I tried to get a clip on there of him throwing a couple passes, but I don't know if they transferred in. Uh, and then he defensively, he's very versatile. He'll sw excuse me, he'll switch pretty much everything. Uh, how we're going to guard him, um, obviously we're going to, try to, as best we can, tag, reroute his rolls um, so he doesn't just kind of run uninhibited to the rim. Um, when he does get the ball, we're going to try to make him score over and through, um, you know, m make it t as tough as possible. Uh, we're going to have to be ready to guard off the DHOs, stay on the floor. He's going to, you know, kind of look to fake and, and draw fouls, and then he plays with a lot of energy. So we want to try to exceed his energy. You can, uh, you can hit the clips, Jesse. All right, let me make sure I can get full screen and get the sound. Okay, you're already good. So, obviously, I think this one is just a simple ball screen, R roll, lob. And there's that little right hand floater. <clears throat> Same thing. Obviously, like I said, just kind of really always looking to roll hard off those screens. So here's kind of an example of him triggering the offense. And then lob.
Is that it, Jesse? Yeah, I think that we're back on the first clip, maybe. All right, so BAM's pretty simple. You know, like I said, screener, um, energy guy. So that's kind of how we would defend him. Or that's my scout on BAM. BAM was an all-star, right? Correct. Yes. Wow. Um, anybody want to? I'll, I'll, thought... I'll go next, A.B. God damn. Hey, Good I happened job. to notice because uh, – I did it. Um, I told our two of our forwards that I've been had got to work out the last couple of days. Um, that because everything we did was in the lane, and um, I could tell they were getting a little frustrated because they want to shoot jump shots and do a bunch of other stuff that you really don't do in a game. And so, um, I told them, I said, Look, 70% of the shots you're gonna take this year are gonna be in this paint, and 30% of the shots you take are gonna be, you know, jump shots and other things. And they both had like this look on their face. So I did the numbers. Uh, one's best favorite player is Joel Embiid. The other one's favorite player is Bam Adebayo. Uh, Joel Embiid, 63% of his shots are taken 15 feet and in. Okay, Joel, uh, Bam Adebayo, 70% of the shots he takes, 70, <laughs> are, are, are eight feet or closer to the rim. And then 90% of the shots he takes are 15 feet and in. And so it really, like, they both perked up and went, okay, I, I got you. And I said, all right, let's get to 65%. But um, that, was, that was crazy about Bam that, you know, 70% of his shots are eight feet and in. And he's an all-star. Yep, great so, job, Dave. Thanks. And let me ask this real quick. How many people are teaching their bigs kind of like a float shot? <laughs> I don't we know. are. We, we are don't. off two feet balance. We do it every day. Check out my IG, you'll see it. <laughs> Dream, you teach him off two feet? Yeah, when they get in the paint, so they have a good balance straight up and down. You know, it's easier to not do a charge that way, you know, and it's easier to get it to go straight up and down for when you take off versus off of one, you know, unless you're on a fast break. So are you doing that from like a, a, a elbow drive, free throw yep. lane, mm -hmm. short corner drive? Yep, we, we do a series of it every single day. Um, you have a series like breakdown you could share with us? Uh, we just started filming. Um, so as soon as we, uh, I'll, I'll send it to you ladies. I ain't send it to none of the fellas though. That, that sounds okay. kind of selfish you there, Dream. Thank you. Thank you. Super <laughs> selfish. I, I just believe in women power, that's all. Title wow. nine, bro. Title yeah. nine, bro. That, that yeah. sounds kind of selfish right there. So, Mandy, when you get that, just share that with us, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't teach floaters, uh, not not for bigs, and um, but I do agree in playing off of two feet because everything that we do, we try to play off of two, and um, that's just so we could be on balance, and not charge. But we don't do floaters. Who said they was up, Coach Pete? Yeah, I'll go. Uh, I think I, I think I have it up, Jesse. We had a good talk last time. Um, share my screen. Who you got? I got. I have Ja Morant. Ooh. Uh, probably one of the most electric players in the game in his rookie season. Um, I don't have any transition clips. I think it's. Automatic, automatically known coming into the game, you ha you have to be able to uh, keep him out of transition. Uh, he has a great imagination with the basketball. He gives the team a great energy. They thrive off him. He's he is there. He is everything to their team. If, without him, they they're they're a mediocre team. When you talk about offensively, because he gets in the he he handles the ball pretty much the entire possession. Um, I'll I'll talk as I run some of my clips. So he is, he is a pretty good shooter off the ball. The, the one way we're going to have to guard him to stop him is use his youth against him, which is changing our ball screen defenses. Um, sometimes he might have to come out of a timeout in a drop coverage. Sometimes he might have to switch. It's also, also have to use, be physical at the point of the screen with him as, as a defender. 
Uh, his favorite move is definitely get you, lower you to sleep with his hesitation dribble. If he gets you in a hesitation dribble, more than likely he's about he's about to probably get into his bag, as, as our kids would say. Um, he's getting downhill, great elite finisher. If he gets two, pe- two feet in the paint in the middle of the floor, he's probably going to try to finish over the top of you, more so than under you. Um, we want to try to keep him out of the middle of the floor. Forcing him baseline is probably the best way to take away his options. If he gets in the middle of the floor, he has the, the option to, to finish, to throw, to throw. He's a really good passer with both hands. So when he gets in the middle of the floor, you see a lot of these clips of him getting to the middle of the floor. He's, in a, he's elite at, at figuring out what he wants to do. Um, so like I said, it, it, but it all starts with keeping him out of transition. We have to use guys that are that are not that are worse shooters like Josh Jackson, DeAnthony Melton, and Kyle Anderson as probably help defenders as well to, to, to create to shrink the space and shrink the floor for him as well. But like I said, he, he is an elite once he gets into his hesitation dribble, he's really, really hard to stop. Because he really, really knocking that mid-range jump shot down in, in the last few games, he is shooting a little bit close to 50% from three. So to stop him, like I said, we have to use his youth against him because he does turn the ball over because he has the ball in his hands so much. So that's the way we have to stop him is switching our defense and, and also posting him up with our bigger guards on offense when he's playing defense. I would hope they would call travel then. Sure. The ball club was good last year against the Warriors. I think this is my last clip. Got to work on that shooting, though. And what do you mean by spot the sucker? Spot the sucker means the guys, like I just called, that's Josh Jackson, DeAnthony Melton, and Kyle Anderson, percentage-wise, not they're, they're their worst shooters when they, they play a lot that's on the floor. So, so right now, if I stopped it, we would really be sagging off 44. That's one of those guys we would probably – that would be one of our suckers that if he's taking the game with a lower percentage and that's Kyle Anderson in the right wing, on the, on the left corner, we would be probably sagged into the corner a little bit more to make him for, – to force him to kick it out and make those guys beat us. A good sign, John Morant. And that's how I plan to stop John Morant. I like how you chuckle at the end because you know it's kind of hard to do that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was about to say stop. <laughs> Contain. <laughs> yeah, stop is a strong word with some of these dudes. No, that's a great job. Great job man. Man. Bad boy. Big time, Tim. Good work. Hey. I can go next if need be. All right, who you got? Jalen Brown. He been working out. I've been watching them them Instagram posts. He's been working out doing quarantine. Yes, he has. Ready to roll? You need help? <laughs> nah, uh, oh, I gotta share my screen. Huh? Let me see here. I've been I, I didn't get to talk to Jesse, but I did talk to his people. So let's see here. Just play as a team. Uh-huh. I have, I have a lot of good coworkers that got my back if I'm busy doing something. Yeah. Can you see my screen here? Yes, sir. All right. All right, I got Jalen Brown. Uh, and, and the way I did it, I'm doing it like it's our first day going over a scouting opponent and we're going through personnel. So that's how I'm doing it. So first day of the scout, we're going over personnel. And I got Jalen Brown starting wing. Uh, we'll play some four. Uh, he's the team's third leading score, uh, but also leads the team in turnovers. Um, he's a guy that scores in transition, kind of driving closeouts, and they run a lot of early action stuff for him. Uh, the way we're going to guard him, he's a, definitely a no right guy. We want to force him left. Not that he's not capable of going left, but way better finisher at the rim going to his right. Uh, he's a close both guy. Um, he's more of a streaky shooter. That's why he's close well because he's shooting 38% from three. Uh, but that's not his deal. He's more of a driver than he is a shooter. So we want to close both but play the drive. Um, and then in pick a roll with our five, we're going to be in a drop coverage. And then with the four, we're going to switch with him. And so that's how we're going to guard him. 
Um, and then we'll go through these clips. More guys are focusing on getting back to their man. And they're worried about James Harden. Still alive, but it's gone. All right. So, again, Jalen Brown, he's best when he's in transition, especially getting to his right hand. How do I turn the volume down? Jesse? Right there by them little lines. Click on the left. See the blue? What uh, is there? Six of them? Yeah. Hey, G, make the screen big. Yeah, you go. There you go. All right. My eyes are bad. Go. Yeah. Uh, like I said, electric in transition, but he's no right. So that's definitely what we want to do. We want to try to take a bunch of charges on him because once he gets going, he's kind of goes with a reckless and band that throws his body in there. So we definitely want to step in and take charges. But again, he's a hard no right guy. Was off of driving closeouts, uh, kind of isos up top. I mean, he's a, a straight line driver is what he is. They run a lot of this early action for him. Uh, and with that early action where they kind of screen away from, we're going to go under that screen, and I'll show you a clip here a little bit later on how they go and get that. But we got to make sure we load to him when he has it. Anytime he's driving left, not nearly as good going to his left. He usually likes to get to a pull-up, or he kind of gets himself caught in between steps and shoots a runner like that. So not nearly good going to his left, so we definitely want to force him left. And here's that early action I was talking about. Let's see here. This is where I'm not as good with my just play stuff. But whenever they screen away for him like this, he definitely likes to catch it and rip to go downhill if he can. So we want to go under this screen because they go right into a ball screen and then that leads right into our drop coverage. So definitely look to go under that, that early screening action. But again, we want to sit kind of on his right and make him go left. McCollum does a good job of here. Not nearly as aggressive getting to the rim where he's going to his left. Again, streaky shooter from three. He's, again, best when he can get his feet set under him. He could drop and he can knock it down. He has a simple driving kick. His feet weren't set, so he doesn't really get a good shot off. Ends up turning it over. Okay? Again, he gets his feet set, drills it. That's that same early action. When we're going under it, we got to make sure we get a hand up and, and contest his shot so we make it put the ball on the floor. And then he is capable of scoring in the post, and he's a way better scorer in the post over his left shoulder. If he goes over his right shoulder, he likes to get to a fade. And so that's how we're going to guard Jalen Brown again. He's a thrilling scorer. He's a close both guy, okay, no right guy. Um, and we want to keep him out of the paint is our, our, how we're going to try to contain Jalen Brown. Any questions? I like the word contain. I like to close both. I like that. Yeah. We have a run off the line, close both, close short. Okay. So if you can't shoot, we're closing short. Coach G, if you're doing that the first time, what are you doing the second time that that's your first day? Uh, the second time, I won't show as many clips because those were about 13 clips I had there. The second time, I'll probably show maybe five. Like, I'll take out the transition clips, and then I probably won't have nearly as many three-point shooting clips because that's not his strength. And just show mainly his strengths and maybe a couple of his weaknesses. And so, like, for us, we would always show more clips on their top three scores than the rest of their players. Good job, G. Appreciate sure. it. Coach G, as I should say. <laughs> um, I'll go, A.B. Before you go, before you go, Coach B, I want to um, show you show y'all something real quick. Anybody close to getting married on here? My anniversary coming up. It was on my vision board, so it's coming true soon. <laughs> uh, Coach, for Saturday. All right, we'll we'll, we'll go out. Chill we'll out, go chill out. Yeah, I don't, want, I don't want to call nobody out. So, <laughs> Coach Benatar, you could go. I'll show it after you. Okay. Um, 
let's see, let me find it here. There we go. So I've worked for a couple of guys I've worked for. Some we've been really in depth. Some we've been not as in depth. I'm taking it from a probably more in depth perspective. Um, and this would be kind of the first time we, we show it. So Rudy Gobert, uh, big, long, athletic guy. Um, you know, he's not really a guy that's going to create offense on his own. He's going to be a guy that uh, needs it created for him. Um, he's a great finisher at the basket, and you can see kind of how he hurts us over 65 or close to 65% of his points are all going to come from mostly just catching. Uh, catching at the rim, whether it be an offensive rebound or a screen roll or, or catching dump pass. Um, he does run, you know, runs really well in transition, uh, you know, using his length, his speed, um, you know, especially off misses and turnovers. He really wants to get out and, and get behind the defense. If they're pushing, if Mitchell or any of those guards are pushing, um, you know, he wants to get out and go and get behind them on a box. Um, you know, he, he's going to go over right shoulder almost every time. On the left block, he's going to get, you know, as deep as he can uh, and drop step uh, on the right box. Uh, he wants to get to, to the middle for a little lefty hook or a little runner. Anytime he's off the ball, screen away, he's always rolling out, looking for a lot almost every time. Uh, on dribble penetration, if he's around the basket, he's kind of trying to slip behind the D to catch drop passes and dunks. If he's on a perimeter and, and his man helps, uh, kind of like what what uh, Coach Frischill was saying, he's going to stampede the catch and just drive it right at the rim if, if his man helps and they throw it to him. He's not going to shoot it out there. Uh, he may you know, reverse the ball, but if he's got an open lane, he's going to try and, and tear the rim off. Um, he's a very good offensive rebounder, getting three a night uh, towards the top of the league. Uh, you know, If he misses, he's going to go after it and going right back up. He's not bringing it down. He's very aggressive with that. Uh, pick and roll action. He's not popping at all. He's going to roll. Uh, you can see, you know, he, he'll slip it some, but, but most of the time he's going to make, make contact and slip out of that, you know, make contact and roll out of that screen looking for that lob. Uh, defensively, really good. You know, obviously really good. Uh, rim protector, one of the best in the league, getting two blocks a night. Uh, he's got great instincts, but he's also uh, sometimes aggressive because he wants to block, you know, as many shots as he can. So he's, you know, towards the top of the league and fouls per night. So, uh, it's kind of a, you know, can be hit or miss there. Uh, how do we stop him? How do we limit his impact? Uh, again, you know, no, nothing free at the rim. That's where he does his damage. So, you know, in transition, you got to be level to him. Uh, you know, obviously you got to, you got to help uh, stop the ball, but at the same time, can't let him slip behind. You got to know where he is. Uh, you, you know, when he is deep, we've got to try and do our work early, push him off, push him out of the lane, be physical with him, have a good base. Um, if he catches it on a box, you know, again, try and, Try and lean on his right shoulder, make him make him go to his right hand. Not nearly as comfortable doing that. Uh, you know, guards, don't be afraid. You know, you can dig down in there uh, when he decks it. Uh, anytime he's screening, you know, again, understand he wants to lob, you know, to catch it at the rim. So understand if you're the tag man or not. Uh, so, you know, again, we just don't give up anything easy at the rim. Again, same thing, uh, you know, when he catches on the perimeter, uh, if he's driving at the bucket, we can take charges. We can take charges. He's not a bad passer out there, but he wants to score it first. So we can take charges on him when he drives it from the perimeter. Um, you can't ball watch. If another guy shoots it, he's, like I said, very good offensive rebounder. He's going to slide, you know, slide underneath the bucket, slide underneath the lane to kind of get position. So you can't watch the ball. You've got to push him out of the lane. Don't give him anything easy at the rim. And then, again, obviously he wants to try and intimidate you defensively. Um, you know, with, with blocking shots. So you can't, you can't be afraid of him. Go right at him, see if we can't get him in foul trouble early. Um, so we'll, we'll watch some clips here and kind of talk as we go. It might be a little bit longer. Uh, make this bigger. Transition there again, you know, can't, can't, you got to see him. You got to see where he's at. You know, that's, that's how he hurts you the most. That's how he hurts you the most. You know, again, off misses, he's wanting to go. He's wanting to go. So right there, you know, trying to take a charge, but we got to kind of stunt stun at that probably a little bit, but we can't give him him a lob at the rim. And that's just work right there. We've got to do a really good job of, of busting our tail ends defensively in transition. Uh, there's the deep seal we're talking about. Try and push him out. I know it's kind of got caught. You know, he's a big old guy, but you got to try and do a good job of pushing him out of there. All right, some of his post-up clips. Again, he wants a deep seal. So right now, 
Valanchunas has got to work to push out early. Didn't have a good base and give up easy bucket. Again, that's how he wants to go. We got to make him come back to his right hand there. You know, two feet in the paint for him. That's 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 odds are it's going to be two points. It's going to be two points. And Coach Tang, I heard sometimes you know you talk, you guys talked about how you guys show stuff that they're not good at that you can take advantage of. We we kind of like to show them, hey, here's what they do a really good job of. Here's how we can, and then we kind of show our guys how do we, what can we do against that to uh, to obviously slow it down. But again, getting that left hand on that right box. You know, hasn't even really looked to get with his right hand yet. There it is off the ball. And that's a tough one right there just because it was naked. Again, he wants the rim every single time. Dribble penetration. Again, when he's at the bucket, he's just going to slip behind. Big's going to help up. If you help up too much and just lose sight of him, you can't flat. You can't flat help. There's the stampede of the catch when he's on the perimeter. Screen and roll. That's one right there. We can probably take a charge on that. We can probably let him just run right through us. It's a pretty good free throw shooter for a big guy, but at the same time, we can't let him get, you know, shooting 78% at the rim with, with no, with no, you know, no, no uh, resistance. Here he is on a glass ball watching. We got to move him out of there. Again, going after every shot. That's all we got. Good job. Coach Tang, have you seen, have you guys watched any of the games of what he's been doing the last few like scrimmages? They've been hitting him on a short roll and, and ha having him be like a real playmaker more than usual like shooting the two the floater and everything like I, I don't know if they say that's what they want him to do to kind of expand his game which is kind of weird for him because he's a really great finisher but it's, it's unique to see a guy's size add that to his game in a matter of two months Tim after watching the Lakers blow two leads when it was up early I, I got sick of watching the NBA stuff so I stopped watching <laughs> Wait, wait till we get to the playoffs. To the playoffs. Yeah, that's that's when maybe they're gonna play serious for four quarters. You got J.R. Smith going though. He he just <laughs> stop that, <laughs> Um, great job, Coach. That dude, I mean, he's a. I remember studying like defensive wind shares and like he was like high up there for defensive wind shares. He affects the game so much defensively. Um, I know you showed offense, but I was doing research and I couldn't believe how much he helped them win just by defensively. I think that's something that's really undervalued for bigs. I think we were talking about that. And one of the text chats, they was talking about how they was talking, when giving block shots enough credit, block shots can can change the team because now you can play aggressively on the perimeter if you got a shot blocker behind you. So, I think shot blockers are very important. All right, before we move on, I know some of y'all gonna talking about getting married. I want to show a, a video. 
I was invited to this wedding and I couldn't go because I was working at the same time of the wedding. And after looking at this video, I'm very disappointed in myself that I didn't find the time to at least go check it out. But this is Jesse's wedding. Y'all check this video out. After seeing that video, I was really disappointed. I didn't, I didn't take advantage of seeing a wedding like that. I you see know. you, Jesse. Don't nobody let yes. their current wife yes. or girlfriend no. see that video. Don't nobody <laughs> don't, don't let them see that. I'm, I'm, I'm about to quit, right. I'm about to quit like, coaching dang. and come work for you, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. Hey, uh, so J Jesse, uh, one of the guys on our staff, uh, AD Bahaltra is Indian, mm -hmm. and so they had a, a traditional American wedding, and then they oh, had- he Indian knows AD. Huh? He knows AD. Yeah, well, AD had a, 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 a Indian wedding also, very similar to that. They did the painting, and uh, it was unbelievable. The video is incredible. Just, Man, I, I was so exhausted. That was three days long. There's no way I could have done an American <laughs> one, too. I had to get out of there. <laughs> so all the different, like, like they change the decorations every single day? Yeah, well, some of them were over like a two hour time period. So from the under the sea looking one to the wedding reception that was blue and white was two hours. Jesse, I got a serious question for you. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm in the streets of India too. <laughs> you in the streets over there too, coach? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesse, I'm, I'm going to see how real you really are. Do you have some parota bread right now in the fridge? No, but I got some some curry leaves that I just pulled from my mother-in-law's garden. Is that count? Okay. Right, I'll let you slide. I'll let you slide. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you slide. You got to have that parota, baby. I love the parota. I'll be keeping it in the fridge, man. <laughs> I, I went I went over to their house last night and went went to town Flavor Town just good, good, garlic good. non. Just oh, that's best. awesome, Jess. Man, you crazy. gotta stay out the streets. Dream live in the streets. You gotta stay in the streets, man. It, it, it keeps you connected. Hey, 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 Dream on the real. Do, do do we all get like a um, a password to coaching uh, changes? Wow. I know you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> On YouTube. <laughs> wow. Oh. I don't I don't do coaching changes, man. My bad, bro. My bad. <laughs> now you good, coach. You're good. Everybody know I do not run coaching changes. It's ran by 15 different people. Oh. Hey, yeah. I was uh I was watching some so I don't, uh, hopefully y'all can see this. I was checking out uh, some some old stuff and uh can, can y'all see that? That's Coach Brown. That that that's a young Coach Brown right there with the with the dreads, the the braids down the back. I was like, whoa, look, that's Coach Brown. <laughs> well, Coach Tang been hanging out with Tim Pete too long. <laughs> oh, man. why gotta be me? Why why can't be why why gotta be me? Why can't be Banks, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, where, where you find that picture, Coach Tang? It was really, they were showing like somebody else, like two other coaches. And then I was like, I saw this. I said, hey, that's Coach. I saw I blew it up and took a shot. So I'm going to show Coach Brown. 
That's been you, gone a long, long time. Yeah, you was in somebody's gym. Uh, when when did you cut it? Today. Uh, three years ago. <laughs> oh, three oh, years. Yeah. Well, you cut the braids. Okay, my bad. Three <laughs> years ago. Yeah. You said cut it today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the picture, man. <laughs> so, so was it hard? It was very hard. Oh. I actually spoke to Dream about it. It was very, very hard. <laughs> wow. How long did it take you to grow up, grow it out? I've had it since high school. So 15 years. Man. Man. Yeah, that'd have been tough. 15 years. Very tough. Man, I have much respect for doing it. Hey, at least it was his choice. I had my hair for a lot longer than that, and it just left on its own. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't had no say in it. <laughs> oh my god! Big, you funny. Anybody else have have um personnel scout off? I know we we doing it next time also. So, because I'll do I'm my up. next time. I'm waiting for Synergy to give me access to the NBA package. So. Who, you, who do you have? Kawhi. Uh, no. I got I got LeBron next week. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we need extra time for the top five players in the league. Ever. Uh, right? Coach, you're back on your wine, coach. I see you. I know, right? Yeah, Dream. A- Dream, I'm disappointed in you tonight, man. Why? Because you spoke up five times and not, have not said Conference USA champs once. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, I got a joke for y'all. I got a it's, a new, joke. it's a new season, bro. That's why. It's a new season. No, no, no. I got a joke no, for y'all. no, no, no. It's still standing. Until someone else <laughs> takes the record, it's still standing. My, my, uh, my compliance officer called me the other day, and she addressed me as, is this Dream Dowling Conference USA champ? I said, yes. <laughs> how can I help you? That's what I said. How can I help you? I'm at your service. So, you know, y'all family. So y'all know me already. So everybody else, I got to reintroduce myself. Somebody watching YouTube for the first time ever. They don't know you. <laughs> we don't know that great draft fit either. Wow. <laughs> Joe, I, I, I think it's the perfect time to uh, talk about this showcase going on this weekend. There you go. Oh, hey, I'll oh, be Brand. Be ready. So, I'm about Man, to we're done my, with you, Brand. Um, hey, you. hey, hold on, hold on, Brandon. Before you go, I want you to know that Friday, Saturday, I was praying for you and your event, and then on Sunday, I found out I was a week early when you said I messed it up. So, well, I did the same thing. I stood up for you, Branch. <laughs> it's fine, bro. Just hey, just keep them prayers coming, coach. Keep them prayers coming. I'm gonna send everybody a link in our group meet um, Friday morning or Thursday night, whenever the screen guy gives me the link. So, man, uh, we got some good players. We got 16 guys, um, like three or four of our guys. I already got a couple of D1 offers. Um, the rest of the guys are, you know, still trying to, you know, gain offers. So, Friday is gonna be a combine um, where we're gonna do different drills, um, agilities, um, three quarter. Um, um, strength tests, things like that, shooting drills and all of that. That won't be live stream. It will just be recorded. But Saturday and Sunday will be live stream. Um, I'm going to send out coaches package to everybody. Everything's going to be free. It's my first one. Um, I'm, I'm doing it for the kids. Every kid is coming in for free. They're not paying. It's invite only. So I just reached out. I reached to a couple coaches to help me out. <clears throat> and um. Just pray for me, man. Pray for me. We got you, like always. Give me your address. I'm going to send you a package. I don't think you want that. What type of package? <laughs> you want, you're good. That, that sounded kind of weird, man. What type of package? Yeah. No, you're <laughs> you not. No. No. Hey, we on YouTube. What, what package are <laughs> you sending, man? Stop, that um, EK, coach. I have a hey, Tam, you coming home Sunday? Yeah, I'll be home Sunday Hello? night. Yeah, uh, Sunday night? Yeah. Where, okay. where are you thinking of? All right. Hey, what, what teams are on the fringe of winning the NBA championship? Like, um, not the favorites. Not the three favorites. Denver Nuggets. Toronto. Denver. 
I will say yeah, that yeah. I'm going out on a limb. If Portland gets in, they'll be the Lakers first round. Wow. Wow. Hey, well, well, too bad they won't get in, Coach. You know, the Lakers hold it down. Cut it out, Sam. Hey, look, I, that's a hot it. take. I'm, I'm cool. I'll be the one going. I, I, I live my life on the edge. I'll be the guy. That's fine. Everybody else want to go with LeBron, Rise Coattail. I'll go with Dane. That's fine. I think Denver going to be a problem. Why? Denver going to be a real problem. They use just play. That's why. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Pass the mic. Please. <laughs> Who has the best shot at winning? What, what, hold on. Why is the Lakers not on here? He said, this, besides the obvious. Besides the three, besides the three. Miami Heat, though. Where where like, the the Celtics like the Heat. Oh, oh we don't have a Boston like on here? Yeah, where's the Celtics? Well, I Take the 76 is off. Take the 76. Well, I asked, nobody said the Celtics or the Heat. Yo, yeah. AB, I lost my screen um, to vote. How, how I get it back? I was gonna crack a joke, but I right now ain't the time to crack voting jokes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you on YouTube live? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually don't know. I don't know. But it looks like the Nuggets won, so we gotta. Everybody a bull bull fan all of a sudden. Why the Nuggets? They Why? trash. I a bull bull fan. Uh, nah, I ain't gonna say nothing. But they, they big. I don't they think. Eat your piece, AB. Go ahead. Yeah, no, nah, I just don't. Cut. I don't watch enough NBA basketball to have a have a strong opinion about anything. So. <laughs> I ain't gonna talk just to talk. <laughs> I need to watch. I need to watch a lot more. I watch more these scrimmages than I've had the whole season before that. And scrimmages, I mean, these scrimmages. Coach Brooks, go watch the Raptors. Wow. It look good too. They play together, they play a lot of different defenses, and teams don't know how to. Know how to scout against it to, to to be successful. A lot of coaches stay saying that now. So, you know, and, and they don't have really. I mean, they got a star, I guess, an upcoming star, Siakam. But they all have to play together to win. And with everything going on, you need camaraderie. Now. So, I really think they have a big advantage. One thing I do like about um watching, like I like hearing the bench cheer. Like you can actually hear the guys on the bench cheer. Like I'm, I'm big into that kind of stuff. Like, they celebrate me. Like so I like that kind of stuff. But I think teams like Miami, um, the Raptors, uh, they have they're good like during the season because they're playing somebody different every night. But in a seven game series, mm -hmm. you gotta have somebody because there's always gonna be an adjustment. So you got to have somebody that the adjustment doesn't work against. And so yeah. if you don't have a superstar. The unadjustable. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's unadjustable. I ain't did this the scout yet, but Damian Lillard. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a bad boy. CJ a bad boy with him. He is. He is. I was just thinking while we were doing these scouts, I don't know what kind of access we can give to our players, but like they favorite player, how well do they really know they favorite player? Like if they have not like, well, not well, no. great question. I'm saying they should do a scout on them. We should have them pick their favorite player and do a scout on them. And like I think that would probably open up a lot of them eyes. Coach Tang, is that legal? Can we help him with that? Yeah. I think we should do that. Because I think a lot of these dudes just see them on TV and see the highlights. But, like, see, like, really, really see. I know it's open my eyes, and I'm a, I'm a coach. I was looking at Damian Lillard's synergy, and I'm like, 
excellent in everything. I ain't never seen this. <laughs> <laughs> Footwork so, like the detail. Yeah, like these guys, they've been they've been in the league. They just been basketball straight for seven years and eight years. Like, so it's different. And they playing against men. So it's different. I don't think our guys understand that. How many hours they put in. But I know it's 10 15, so hey, before we log off, ladies and gents. Uh, if you're not doing anything Monday night at chill, 8 p.m. Chill, Central, chill. right, and you want to see AD nervous, come and check us out. <laughs> Cupcaking with the Dowlins on IG with me and my beautiful wife and AD and his beautiful wife, Tim. If you want to see him nervous, Monday, 8 o'clock, trust me, he's going to be on there nervous. Ain't no scout report can help him with this one. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need them questions beforehand, bro. <laughs> I bet I bet Jareen was the dude in school that he covered up his paper when people would. Be <laughs> nah, I always sit behind the short person so I can see right over that left shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jareen, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> nah, but appreciate. Everyone, uh, all y'all appreciate men and women. Thank y'all for coming every week and allowing us to basically be ready together. I mean, it's, you know, it's crazy. Coach Tang and like people talk about it at the office a lot. And like we probably talk about it at the office a lot. And so, um, actually, I was looking at the Gators today like the Gators and Coach Beard on, still on here? Did he leave? He must have left. He was like, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. You about to get some B-Ready Gators. Uh, <laughs> yep, you already know. <laughs> so um, talking to them in the process, I actually I asked them for the artwork to see it. So I'll send it in a group meet just to kind of get y'all Opinion on which ones y'all y'all think are the best. What, what is the gator? That thing that I had on yesterday. The the one that like covers your whole neck and all that. Yeah, it covers your neck and just covers like the front of your face right here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. My head mm -hmm. too big for a regular what you call it. Be pulling my ears like this. Look at Coach Tag model in it. The mask. <laughs> Hey, it works great because like you can talk through it, and then you Coach can Tang, show, show your whistle trick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can put your whistle inside, and then you just blow your whistle from the inside, and it's loud. If you try to do a whistle on the outside, you can't hear it. And so I just put my whistle right here, and it just sits on my cheek. And then when I need to blow it, I just and let it go. He was, he was doing it, demonstrating it in the office. Coach Drew was amazed. Coach Drew was like, so where's your whistle? Where'd it go? <laughs> I practice. I practice with all the different masks and everything to get ready. <laughs> yeah, no, that oh actually, the mask is actually really hot. And that actually is a lot better when you're working guys out. So I was like, we got to invest in those. Yeah, it's hard to just wear one every single day. Them great be ready dry fits too. We gotta invest in those too. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I actually got question. Is there anyone that's not going back to workouts other than me? We haven't started yet. We haven't we done it. Have have tomorrow and we done. We're bringing our guys back August 9th. <laughs> the champs are working. Anyone else? not have a date just okay. me. we've given our guys the freedom though to be here or not be here though so um we kind of give them the you know freedom to do what they want to do right now but who's here we're working out and we're not making a big deal the guys that are not here how many guys you got on campus uh until today we had 11 but now we're down to like six Dang. Yeah. yeah.
we have 15 out of our 19 and they leave tomorrow. Thank the Lord. How many walk-ons y'all have? Yeah, I was gonna say 19 players. Y'all play. Right. Yeah, we got we got we got y'all stacking scholarships over there at high point. <laughs> <laughs> walk-ons, man. Six walk-ons. Why do you have so many walk-ons? Practice. <laughs> Need that body, man. How many locker? How many lockers do y'all have? Right. Yeah. I don't get a locker. We have eighteen lockers. Eighteen yeah. lockers. Yeah. And then our new facility won't be built, won't be finished until the spring. How many lockers y'all putting in there? I think we're putting in twenty. Damn. How is that possible? Who? About to have a lacrosse team instead. <laughs> <laughs> lacrosse. I think lacrosse has seventy dudes on their team. Uh, uh, so uh, basketball team y'all got some title nine issues over there them numbers ain't <laughs> adding up <laughs> I think the, the females have 55 they got the lacrosse team and they got the field hockey team oh okay can y'all see this no no the red and i'm colorblind i see red <laughs> <laughs> throwing off my <clears throat> my background, I don't want the world to see my background like that. My wife would be mad. <laughs> Big old chair. It is. So, got this red one that I'm going to test. I'm testing. It's the same material, bro. Like, that's right. prolonging the weight. <laughs> I'm testing this to go with my, my black and blue J's. What um, number? I don't know. I don't know numbers. Oh What's, man! Hey, what size, bro? Oh, this wrong. This Baylor. <laughs> <laughs> well, send me that Baylor. Send me that Baylor. I got a green one just like that, though. That UNT green. I see it. I see that. I see that. Hey, green. Do these shirts fit like normal people sizes, or are they basketball player sizes? Because there's two different things. I know. No, it's, it's normal Not people. Basketball we, size. They, them kids wear extra, extra small stuff now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Hey, Je hey Jesse, yeah. I'm four feet and they fit me, so. <laughs> All right, I keep that in mind. Yeah, now the dry fits, the dry fits like fit like, I mean, they actually fit really good. Like, is, is that what you use when you're walking? Actually, I don't. I sad, sad to say, I I wear Baylor just because the the racial stuff that's going on stuff. So. Oh. I wear Baylor all the time, just so because I don't. If I get questioned, smart. You don't want to buy a mess with you. Nah, so that's messed up. It's really, <laughs> it is, it is. But I know what kind of where we living in, so I always wear Baylor basketball stuff when I'm walking. So smart. Um, but. Thank y'all again. G, when y'all, when your anniversary? Uh, we're celebrating it this weekend, as long as I'm able to go. I got tested for the Rona today. Oh, oh man. Yep. Just precautionary or you feel that you was feeling some kind of way? Our GA tested positive on Sunday. Mm. You've been around them? So, yeah, we, had, we started workouts last week. And we're starting our full team workouts this week. And because he tested positive, we've been shut down. So we all got tested. Everybody? Yep, our whole team did. So we got tested today. So I'll hopefully get my results tomorrow to know where I'm at. We celebrate our anniversary this weekend also. Yeah. Our anniversary, though, ain't till the 14th, though. But my wife's working. Celebrating ours. Tang doing the same. So why everybody get married in August? It's Coach Tang anniversary, AB. I mean, what, what what's the deal with August? I miss oh, something. They want to miss practice time. period. Practice time. Tell me, you said was the that? Um, number one answer on Family Feud. Ours is August. <laughs> ours is August first. So the day I get out of quarantine is our uh, is our anniversary. So happy happy quarantine. What, happy what, August second. So happy, happy, happy anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary, you everybody. Guys too. You guys too. We're happy August 4th. First. August 14th. Tommy, oh. you got to send me your address too, Tommy. I got something for you. 
Don't do it, Tommy. Don't do it. Hey, don't knock out the back, bro. Chill out. Yo, Cody's like in like 10 minutes. Finishing up your age. Right. All right. No dream. No. What? Dream. <laughs> Is DoorDash still um, working? Nah, the wife don't allow me to work past uh, 9.30. Once it hits 9.30, she starts calling me if I'm not at the house at 9.30. That's good. Good. Yeah. So that's when the real money is being made up. I got a question, though. Like, rumor has been that DoorDash, a lot of DoorDash people eat the food. Have you ever thought about eating the food? Nah, but it'd be tempting, though. It'd be tempting. It'd be tempting. The only spot to potentially eat the food from I know I'm on YouTube Live, which is cool, but I'm just letting people know. Um, what's the burger spot? Um, that you gotta wait for. Uh, what's that burger spot called, babe? On um, Loop 288, right next to Chick Fil A. Smash Burger. Five guys. Five guys. Five guys. So five guys. They're not allowed to cook the fries until you get there. So now you gotta wait an extra five minutes, so you could potentially get hungry. While waiting for the fries to be cooked, so you gotta show real discipline because it comes out extra hot and crispy. And you gotta take the bag down the road, and they don't close the bag, and it's wide open, and you're driving. And every time you turn on the signal light, you turn left or right, you see the fries. You like, man, and they man. pour extra fries in there too. Extra yeah, fries. and they dump all the fries at the bottom. Yeah. I appreciate your honesty, man. I'm being real. They don't the staple. They way. don't staple the bags so that no. It's no, too greasy. The bag yeah. Yeah. fall out the bottom it's anyway. It's so so much Man, greasy. I'm glad I don't DoorDash. That's foolishness right there. <laughs> coach, coach Tang, you have to ask for repentance because you be you, you might eat the food, Coach. No, because yeah. if I order something, I want them to seal it up. I don't want the driver to be able to look inside and see what's in there and mess with my food. <laughs> but here, here, here's the tricky part about these all these um these you know Uber Eats and DoorDash thing that. It's kind of like Russian roulette. People call me and cuss me out when they don't get everything they're supposed to, okay? But think about this. They staple the bag before you get there, and they tell you look on the app to make sure their fries is there, all this. There's no way for you to look in the bag, and it's already stapled. So when you get it, it's on the restaurant. But they call me complaining, like, this is terrible service, and... You know, be messing with my 4.94 rating, but you know, who's who? <laughs> and if you go through and say everything's in there, they're gonna say, Why you touch my food? Exactly. I don't, <laughs> yeah, I just I just trust them, man. I trust people, man. So I trust that they'll have their food. Man. I, I trust you now that you ain't eating the people's fries, though, man. That's big time. No, nah, no, nah. but I do get a free cup of ice or water when I go in because it'd be hot out here. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Because team, we, we have to pray for um, Coach Amir and his family. Right. Yeah. Um, he, he texted me before. He couldn't. <clears throat> he's kind of mentally, probably mentally and physically, probably exhausted from everything. So, pray for his strength. Pray for his family strength. Oh my. Hey, I want I want I want to say one last thing before um before we go to Coach Tang's prayer. Uh is Jamal on here? Where you at? Hold on. Coach, where's your guy from, from Chicago that you sent to me, Coach? He on here, right? Who? Oh, Rain. You know what I'm talking about, Coach? Coach who? From Chicago, <laughs> when you sent to me in the hospital in Chicago. Oh, oh, Javon Bayman. He was he, on. Yeah. He was on. Yeah, Javon on. Yeah, you out there? Well, yeah. He's right. He's on my screen. I can see him. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, let, let me let me uh, share a quick quick story, right? Because you were How, in the street. Yeah, a quick story. When I was going through my depression, right, um, and I was trapped in Chicago. I had, I don't know anybody in Chicago. But of course, I called Coach Tang. You know, he's one of my 911 calls. And uh, he called Jovan to deal with me and help me get back to my hotel, feed me when I was in, you know, there mentally. And I just want to give him a shout out and, and love on here because he could have 
ran with it and tell the whole world, yo, I was dealing with Reem when he was, you know, not all well. And he looked out for me like he knew me since day one, man. So um, I just want to say thank you to him in front of everybody. Uh, he looked out for me when I was by myself in Chicago. And you know, Chirac is not an easy place to be walking around. Uh, I had no winter jacket. Uh, it was cold as hell. And uh, he came, picked me up, made sure I ate my food, took me back to the hotel. I just want to say thank you to you publicly in front of all these people and let them know um, how much you have my back when you meet me for the first time in that situation. So I'm just saluting you on here, my brother. Appreciate you. You're welcome, fam. Anybody right. that's good with Coach Tang is always good with me. That's it is, fam. That's love. Uh, appreciate that. Appreciate you sharing, sharing that story. And so what we always do at the end, is turn it over to Pastor Tang. That's, uh, yeah, man, we, we, we're all so blessed. I, um, so this week, um, my, my wife's brother and his wife just had their sixth child. What? Um, the baby, yeah, baby Preston is um, not doing well, so they had to take her to Texas Children's. My my brother in law's wife has blood clots, so she's bedridden, and so he has to take care. He has his daughter, his baby daughter, in the hospital. His wife's bedridden, and he has five others. So my wife and I went down to Houston and got the other five, and brought them to our house. Now all five of them are under the age of 11. There's a two, there's a four, there's a six, there's an eight, and there's an 11. Yeah, I see some of y'all's faces. Now, I haven't dealt with a little, like my kids can make breakfast, they can cook dinner, they can be in their room. Like I'm in a different spot today because AB even asked me today, he said, what are you gonna do be, no, Dream said, what are you gonna do be ready from with all them kids in the house? So I'm gonna go in the bedroom because I don't have my, can't be in my spot out there, but, um, Man, them little jokers, whew, they're full of energy, they're running around, but it, it just makes you um, really appreciate health and family. And not everybody has this kind of family. You know, like some people, they can only depend on blood relatives and some of those they can't depend on. And, but I mean, we got family here that we can depend on that some of you, I mean, if it wasn't for this camera, I'd walk by you on the street. Just if I, if you don't have your camera on, those of you that didn't have your camera on, and uh, <laughs> but you know, I mean, it's it's just great to have family that you know. When somebody sends you a text message and say, "Man, will you pray?" You know, people are gonna be praying for you. That you know, if you know, you have somebody who's down and out in their city, you can call them and they'll drop what they're doing, like Javon did, and um, go take care of them without even knowing them because you know that that's what it's about so um i want y'all to know that um man when y'all when we get messages you send messages or of things of god doing things in your life and you're being successful and and you know things are happening um man it, it's it's like i win you know i mean you know i always say it's a great saturday for us during the season when the baylor bears win when North Texas wins, when Oral Roberts wins, when North Florida wins. And now I got a whole list of people I got to add. So I hope y'all ain't playing each other on a certain day because there you know, ain't no win situation. But I'm gonna, I am mean, there's going to be a whole list of checking to see who won, you know, and um, and rejoicing with y'all. So I want you to know that we, we rejoice with each other. We cry with each other, but we're there for each other. And so it's just a, a great blessing. Um, I, I got Coach Amir, I got um, Coach Thomas sent me um, Ar that's Ar Arnitha, Ar Arnitra Smith, who passed away in her family. Um, anybody else that, that that has a prayer request that we can be praying for? Hey, Coach Tang, yep. this is Lester. I got you, Lester. Um, I got to travel this weekend uh, to Colorado Springs to uh, take my daughters back. Um, they get ready to start school in a couple of weeks. So just, uh, just asking for, you know, traveling mercies and um, just for God to cover them through the school year, um, just cause it's going to be different. And, uh, you know, just uh, hopefully the two months will go by fast before I can, um, before they back up here 
hanging out with me again. So, gotcha. All right. Yeah, Coach Tang, I'm right there with you. I got a this good old 18 hour drive from North Carolina back to Texas. I'm gonna pick up my brother in Atlanta. So we're gonna do it in a week. Okay. And then come right back. So give us traveling grace and mercy. All right. 18 hours, bro. Where y'all going? To Dallas is from High Point to Dallas is 18 hours. Wow. Same for me. I'm driving home to help my mom, my dad. He having a, a little minor heart, sir, little minor heart operation, and he getting his getting his knee uh scoped out the same week. So he's doing a lot at once. So that's why I'm going home Sunday. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Coach Tang, you don't have to add me in the prayer, but uh, I just want to you know, give thanks to God on Sunday. Uh, I'll be 33 years old, so just thanking him for another year on the earth and uh, hopefully continue to make an impact in people's lives, uh, continue to grow uh, uh, over an another year. So just want to Happy say birthday that. early. Appreciate that. Happy man. birthday. Don't celebrate like Coach Tucker did. <laughs> <laughs> Send him your address. He'll send you something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'll follow that up with saying some positive. My wife got a new job, and thanks for that. She's now going to be a school nurse up here, so we're going to be making more bread. So thank the oh, Lord for that. to get another thing in the, in, in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I know how Russ, you seen that. Like, come on. Russ got some good eyes, bro. Class. I'm like, dang. <clears throat> so, yeah. Hey, you need to take that Benz for a ride. About to I get guess. a new one. It's nice. I mean, here's the – are we still on YouTube? Live? Actually, it's a promotion. So, my <laughs> – <laughs> I'll tell you the true story. So, my – I married well. I, I, I always talk about I got a good eye, so I'm a good evaluator and I'm a good recruiter. And so <laughs> my my wife's family, it's actually my wife's sister's in-laws, they own a Mercedes dealership in the Twin Cities. So for you Baylor guys, it's always in the city. So when you guys come in to the airport in Bloomington, you see Feldman's dealership? Yeah. That's my family. So do they ship cars for free? I don't know if it'll be for free, but <laughs> <laughs> Feldman's dealership is like part of my family now. So, you know, that's why, you know, I got a Benz. Hey, bae. So, so if you're looking for a Benz, Feldman dealership, quick plug, you know, they got all the hookups over there. They got the nice rides over there. So if you need a Benz, go come to Minnesota and get it. We want that Coach G family discount though. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's a nice ride. Everybody else, we got another praise report. G. Alice Pops. He's doing all right. It's been a couple of days since I've talked to him, though, so I'll reach out to him tomorrow. Check let, in. Let, 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 let him know we asked about him. I will. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Close Come mouth and get fed. I got a chance to be in the gym for the first time since March. Amen. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe That's I didn't say nothing about that. <laughs> Dude, Tuesday, I'm telling you, Man. it felt like um, I was a freshman in high school going <laughs> to the first day of school. You know, man, I was so excited. That, that was, yeah. Take for granted being in the gym with your dudes, man. Not a doubt. Hey. Tang, can we appreciate the prayers for my dad? Can you add um can you add all the people in the Caribbean right now that has got to deal with that? It's not a hurricane, but it's a nice little tropical storm that's blowing through there. Okay. And sure, then we have a do one of the speakers on here, the AD. His campus got flooded. Pray for his campus. Chase. And uh UTRGV, 
with all really? that initial. Yeah, yeah, the campus got fl flooded. So okay. he posted something on social media. Wow. I'm writing it down. Coach, uh, Pastor Tang, I appreciate the prayers for my, my father. He's uh, COVID free now and uh, hey. he's up and running. So appreciate those prayers. Coach Thomas's dad. I get to put a star by it. There we go. I like it. Oh, yeah. I don't know if Coach Ford is on, but he asked us to pray for his assistant. And then uh, remember Coach Curry's dad also. I don't know if she's on tonight. Not, but. And Tommy, we are thankful to see you, buddy. Man, fired up, fired up for you. I know there's some people on here, they ain't talking, but they got interviews coming up this week and some other things going on. So we're gonna pray God's favor on their lives. And uh, anybody else who's, you know, looking for something, we'll be, we're gonna be praying for you too. All right, so. And then Mandy, we'll pray that y'all get a date to start workouts. We need a date that we're going to have athletes on campus. We have zero athletes on campus, including football players. So a date to get athletes on campus. All right. All right. Buy your hearts with me. Father God, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus, uh, for him dying for our sins, Lord God. Father God, thank you, Lord, that, uh, Lord God, we just don't have uh, eternal life through Christ, but God, we have an abundant life here on earth, Lord God. And Father God, there's nothing that we face or that we go through that catches you by surprise, Lord God. And Father God, there's nothing, Lord God, that we are going to face that we have to face by ourselves, Lord God. We can depend on you to be with us. Father God, I just want to thank you for each and every person on this call. Thank you, God, for the impact they've had on my life personally, Lord God. Father God, thank you for the, the energy that they give me, Lord God. And Father God, your word says the power of life and death are in the tongue. And Lord God, thank you for the life that they've spoken into my life, Lord God. And Father God, I pray, Lord, that everyone they come in contact with, God, God, they would speak life to, Lord God. God, that you have given us influence. You've given us, Lord God, a platform. And God, that we would use it, Lord, to honor you and to impact lives, Lord God, because that's who we are. That is our purpose. Our purpose is to impact lives, Lord God. And I pray Lord God, that we would take that very, very seriously, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for all the needs, Lord God, that you've met, Lord God, for those that uh, you've opened doors for them to get jobs, Lord God, for connections that you've made, Lord God, that, that help us to, to move forward, Lord God, in our careers, Lord God, and to, to be able to be better, Lord, at what we do, Lord God. God, I lift up Al and Tiff and AJ and Austin to you, Lord. God, I ask that you would just continue to bless their lives, Lord God. Continue to pour creative thoughts into Alvin, Lord God, and uh, Lord that, and not just the idea, Lord God, but the execution of the ideas, Lord God, as you give him the details to make whatever he puts his hand to do, Lord God, effective and prosperous, Lord. And thank you for Tiffany and her support, Lord God, of Alvin as he moves forward, Lord God, and as you open doors and knock down walls and, and create paths, Lord God. God, as he creates path, uh, paths as a trailblazer, Lord God, not just following what everybody else is doing, but making his own way, Lord God. And Father God, I, I just want to thank you, Lord God, for Tommy, Lord, for healing him, and for Sarah and for Abigail, Lord God, for, for their strength and support. Father God, thank you, Lord God, for the encouragement of seeing Tommy tonight, Lord God, and the the, the, the strength and the, the, the power, Lord God, that he gives all of us with his courage on how he attacks things, Lord God. And Father God, we're just so, so thankful, Lord God, for, for healing 
uh, Coach Thomas's dad, Lord God, and, and your continued healing in him and, and continuing to strengthen him, Lord God. Father God, we just uh, lift up to you right now, Lord God, uh, uh, Amir, Lord God, you know how, how much value, Lord God, he's added to all of our lives, being on these Zooms and, and just being such a great, wonderful person, Lord God. And Father God, we just lift up him and his family to you, Lord God, as he's lost his dad. Father God, that you would just strengthen them, Lord God. Father God, as, as Amir is doing what he does, which is being strong for everybody else, Lord God. God, that you would be his strength, Lord God, that you would be his comfort, Lord God. God, that you would give him opportunities, Lord God, to, to let down his guard and to, and to grieve, Lord God, in the right way, Lord God, so that he can receive healing on the inside also. Lord, allow us, Lord God, to know how to reach out, Lord God, and how to support and how to strengthen, Lord God. Father God, we just lift up the family of Anitra Smith to you, Lord God. Lord, that we ask that you just be with, with them and uh, just, just strengthen them, Lord God, as they, they go through this grieving of a lost loved one, Lord. Father God, we pray for Lester, Lord God, and his girls as he takes them to Colorado Springs. Lord, that first that you give them travel and mercy, Lord God, as they go. Lord, that you protect his girls, Lord God, as they go back to school, Lord God. And Father God, that you'd speak peace into Lester's life, Lord God, that he doesn't have to worry, Lord God, that, that he can put them in, in your hands, Lord God, and the best thing that he can do for his girls, Lord God, is to, to, to cover them in prayer and fill their hearts with love, Lord God. Father God, we lift up uh, Ricky and his brother as they're traveling from North Carolina to Texas and back, Lord, we ask for traveling mercies and protection, Lord God, for safe roads and no speeding tickets, Lord God, and and Father God, no, no, no issues with cars, Lord God, but God, that it would be a smooth, wonderful trip for, for both of them, Lord God. And Lord God, I just uh, lift up Tim as he's going to be traveling to see his dad, Lord God. We pray for Pops, Lord, as he's going to be going through these, these surgeries, Lord God, that you would be with him, Lord God. God, sometimes you choose to heal by your miracle healing power, and sometimes you choose to heal through working through doctors, Lord God. And Lord, we just pray, God, you would give the doctors wisdom, Lord God, that you would give them precision in executing the surgeries, Lord God. And, and Father God, we pray for a speedy recovery, Lord God, and that you would just protect him as he travels back to Memphis, Lord God. Father God, we just uh, pray, Lord God, for those of us, for, for the people in, the, in the, the, the Caribbean, Lord God, who are having tropical storms come through, Lord God. Lord, we dream and I and others on here have family, Lord God, and on different islands. Lord God, through the we ask that you would uh, just protect them, Lord God, during this time, Lord God. And Father God, we lift up uh, Chase who gave his time to come on here and, and share with us, Lord God, and, and the, 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 the campus of um, UTRGV, Lord God, and uh, Lord uh, Coach uh, you know, Lou is down there and, and, and his team, Lord God, and we ask, Lord God, that you would just, uh, Lord, I know they have some damage, and Lord, that you would give Chase wisdom and how to, to deal with that, Lord God, that you would provide the finances for the recovery, God, you would protect, Lord God, those who need protection, Lord God, but just, just be with, with that family down there, Lord God, and as they try to deal with a flood in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of everything else that's going on, Lord God. And, and so, God, we, we lift up Chase and his family and, and the, the, the group down there at, the, at Texas Rio Grande, Lord God. Father God, uh, and I just uh, pray for, for Mandy and, and all those at Fresno State. Lord God, we pray for the athletic director, Lord God, and God, that you give him wisdom in making decisions, Lord God. I know it's tough right now. I know how tough it was for us trying to figure out when we'd get our guys back, Lord. And so, Lord, with no athletes being on campus at Fresno State, Lord God, we pray, Lord, that you would just allow the administration and those in leadership to come up with a date and so that uh, they can give their girls guidance on when they're coming and, and what, what's about to happen, Lord God. Father God, Lord, we're still dealing with a pandemic. We're still dealing with injustice. Lord God, we're dealing with, with just life as a whole and and lord we need you we need your wisdom we need your strength we need your power we need your peace lord god i just lift up uh, those who are going to be interviewing for jobs this week lord god father god for those who are trying to get interviews for jobs those who are looking for jobs lord god that you open the doors and you make the connections lord god and father god that 
that you, Lord God, would work out. Lord God, if I got to pray for my young fellow that you give him favor in his interview today, Lord, this week, Lord God. Father God, give him wisdom, Lord God, and uh, allow him, Lord, to be the best version of himself. And if that's where you want him, God, that you would open the door and make it happen, Lord God, that nothing would stand in the way. But God, if you have something better for him, that you would make it clear and evident to both he and his family, Lord God. Lord, I just thank you uh, for all that you do. And Lord, I just pray that you just uh, bring us back together next week. We're ready to have another great time. It's in your name we play and we pray. Amen. 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 It's still past the time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, fellas. All right, Rush, you look exhausted, bro. 5.30, come quick. What you doing at 5.30? I can't sleep in, Coach. Oh, man. I wake up on your own at 5.30? 5.30 every morning. He's sick, y'all. What do you do <laughs> when you're up? What's your first thing you're doing? I, I do my Calm app for 10 minutes. I read for about 15, take my dogs for a walk, and then I go and I work out. Your dogs wake up that early? Mm-hmm. What kind of dogs you got? Mutts. Rescues. Wow. Wow. Ours bark 